Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Overwatch All Stars Brawl Five. As always, presented by Star Esports, a double elimination tournament dedicated to the Overwatch Tier Three community. Today, we'll be having citizens take on Shattered Dreams to decide who goes to the finals and who takes third place. I'm Poor Zach, your play-by-play, -play, and joining me on color is Tony. Hey, man, how you doing? Happy to be here. I'm doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Pretty excited to see this matchup. Of course, these teams are competing for their place in the finals uh, against, I believe, Scion. So, you know, could be a redemption for Citizens and could be kind of a Scion story for Shattered Dreams if they were to pull it off. Yeah, that's true. Um, Scion has kind of be the, been the team to beat in this tournament. And uh, as the previous tournament champions, you know, they're, they're definitely looking really good. But as it stands, you know, both these teams are formidable foes. Um, and both have had... Uh, pretty good runs through the tournament uh, with Shadow Dreams beating Astray and um, Citizens just dominating until until they met, met Scion. So um, a lot, a lot of a um, lot of positives for both teams to look forward to, as you would expect in the final round of the losers bracket. Yeah, you Scion just coming back or Citizens just coming back from Scion match and Shadow's been doing a really good job keeping their heads up while they're uh, in this lower bracket. Of course, you know they were knocked down pretty early on going into the round two i believe of the lower bracket kind of like how scion did uh last season and then they're managing to get their way all the way through you know they're pulling off all the work they're definitely showing adaptation uh because they did go down later so now it's like they're really paying attention they're trying their hardest as i assume they were already but you know now they're adapting more they're uh trying to pull off a little bit more different strategies trying to maybe find weaknesses in some of these teams that are happening here today and you know when it comes to weaknesses getting this far means that you probably don't have many or at least many that are visible yeah true um the one thing <clears throat> that may or may not be a weakness it just depends how it works out is that shadow dreams is playing with a main a ringer main tank in noro <clears throat> so that being such, such one of if not the most crucial role especially if the the main tank on your team is generally the shot caller could could have a ripple effect on your team uh, but once again you know maybe maybe he fits he you know noro will play above what Genji would normally play, it's hard to say. Um, I know both are really strong tanks, so that that will be uh, a caveat to this match that uh, should change um, how this match plays out. Yeah, and we saw Nora in the match before as well, and they were able to fall off the win still, so seeing them here today isn't too startling for them and isn't too concerning. Uh, of course, you know, you, you would want to have that main tank that you have formulated more of this connection with uh, as you moved through the bracket. But when they were able to, or when they had to rather, swap over to Noro to have them in the main tank role, you know, it definitely still showed promise. And I don't expect this to go easy for either side today. Uh, and starting off on King's Row could lead that to, you know, be a very big map. Yeah, and uh, while we're going in the match, we want to let you guys know that the MVP poll will be open down below. So if you see a player that you'd like to highlight, um, vote for them and we will bring them on after the match to interview. Uh, ask them some questions, get their insight, and let them have some moment in the spotlight. Um, it doesn't matter if they're the winning team or not. And also, you guys are gaining um, drops, Twitch drops, just for tuning in. So, uh, a big night for that as well. Yeah, should be, you know, good time all around. Just sitting here, you know, you're getting your drops. You're watching some pretty high-level Overwatch right now, and it's all going to be good. And going into the first map on King's Row, you know, I think this is ultimately going to be the decider. I think whoever takes King's Row is probably going to end up taking the match in its entirety because both of these teams seem pretty solid on King's Row. And of course, you're going to also have that map pick and ban afterwards, depending on who uh, takes the map. They're going to be able to ban a map. And looking at both these teams, Citizens, they had their issues in their last match with Sion when it came to control. And Shattered Dreams is great at the King of the Hill maps, but they don't really do the best on Volskaya. Volskaya, they had a full hold before, I think, on Astray, but then uh, it looked pretty promising when they went up against, I think it was Crix on the last one, and they were able to take Volskaya off of them. I think their only map dropped was Volskaya. I could be wrong there. Um, but that's something they want to stay away from, where you know both these teams are kind of seeing these weaknesses and uh, map pools uh, between them. So whoever really takes this first map, I think will probably take it all the way. Yeah, well, they call it Skirm's Row for a reason. If your King's Row isn't strong, then you need to make your King's Row strong because it's just the bread and butter of, of um, you know, Tier 3 plus scene. Like, everybody likes to play King's Row, and it's just it's just a, uh, a litmus test to how well your team can work together. It, it is, I will say, though, that it's a little bit different than a lot of maps. You do see more Zarya here than you would see on other maps. Um, so 
that respect it can be a little bit different so you know if you do lose you can say okay well you know maybe they had a good Zarya that they were able to play through but even still you do see diva a lot on this map as well as just having the diva matrix down those corridors uh, speaking specifically of second point uh, it is a very strong point for her to to just mitigate all the incoming pressure generally for such a long period of time yeah and the the diva may trade off as well can really depend on how fight goes up because with diva you're able to eat the fire strike and that's gonna prevent like the rhine from you know getting that ult charge any more up than you really want it to and then if you run the zarya though you could bubble yourself or whoever else is in the way and then yeah. gain a little bit more damage because of it and that's kind of the trade-off you want to go with and hope that it, it's a, it seems a little more consistent with diva because if you eat it it's like nothing nothing gained really for your team but they lose out on all charge meanwhile if it's zarya it's like you can gain some but they could also gain some because let's say a bubble goes down too early it's hitting multiple people so of course you can't bubble everybody yeah uh so it just seems like it's more consistent you know what you're getting into when you're playing with the diva and yeah and diva is also really good at eating anti nades which is such a huge thing and in, and in addition to her all over heels so it basically nullifies her completely for you know the two to three seconds um and but on the flip side of that, Zarya can be really nice. If you see a, a pivotal target that gets anti, you can cleanse it off them. So it can be kind of a bait um, or, you know, or you get a GL free card in some sense. So um, both of them have their, have their benefits, but um, at this time, it looks like we're going to be sticking with the D.Va on both sides, which is not too surprising in the least. Yeah, not, not super surprising right now, as you're about to see as the screen goes into this here. You're going to be seeing on the defense here, uh, for citizens you know they're running with that standard composition that you see right now in overwatch league and other high levels of play and it looks like you're gonna be seeing the same thing on the offense as well which these are pretty good in their respects here with the may and the mccree yeah no reason to swap up meta here so we're gonna see when they go head to head who comes out on top yeah with two really good may walls sandwiching both of the rhines and actually the may gets frozen in there noro being the first one going down that's not very good for them it looks like they're gonna have to back up here vanguard actually might get staggered out on the diva as they pick up a few more kills and yes they will get staggered for a little bit longer as that wall comes up just trying to make their way through but it's slept as well oh no just insult to injury that's the that's the downside when you swap when you're the attacking team going to the right around the statues you're in a closed area whereas uh, citizens could freely rotate around that wall so the both walls were exactly like equivalent in placement but just because of the area citizens were working in they were able to go around and assist their ryan and get that kill so yeah, they're going to look forward to the next fight. Yeah, and there's like a couple ways you can play this differently here. It looks like they're going to decide to go through the hotel here. Uh, starting off instead of that, around that statue like they did before as they slowly move up here. Just trying to look for some kind of pick damage, whether it's just focusing the shields or not. But actually, we can see citizens rotating themselves through uh, the hotel here to get their way a little bit closer. Kareem going very low and frozen and now taken down. So they're missing their main take and they're missing their May. This is very good for the offense. It's something you really like to see. But Zeus, definitely a power player, does get the pick onto their counterpart. 60 looking out right now. Vanguard has that anti onto them and asleep as well going on a Nora. But Zeus still being up is putting in some work here. Now able to pick two, make that three, still up. Zeus is really putting in work in the back lines right now, but eventually does get taken down. But was it all for not? It looks like they're going to be able to stall a little bit longer. Really just Kareem snack on here. Finally going down after taking out Dash and a little bit scrappier of a fight, but the offensive match. Yeah, definitely eventually scrappier. Ended. Definitely scrapper than it should have been. You don't, you don't do, you don't challenge the duel master himself. McCree is the duel master. Like you don't, you don't one v one him. And two people from Shadow Dreams throwing themselves with Zoo, which is not Zoo, which is not you want to do, especially one at a time. Shadow Dreams did a good job of, of working in the open air, which worked against them in the in the first fight, and then using that to advantage the second time, especially when citizens kind of gave it up and followed them. So going to the second second fight, we do have uh, a May ult on the side of Shadow Dreams, so they can make use of that before Boat farms his, and this could be an easy another fight win for them, and probably an easy second point cap. Yeah, none of the teams using their ultimates within those first two team fights, primarily because they weren't quite at them just yet and didn't want to commit them too fully here. Looks like they're going to start off with that Blizzard, though, making sure they're trying to take that advantage. Like you said, the Shatter comes through with the High Noon, not really finding anything with either of those just quite yet, but eventually they do decide to pull the pin on that. Nothing happening. It looks like they're throwing in the bomb. Vanguard might be able to find some. Nora already being taken down. They don't have any shields, but they try to invest the Nano. Leo Cake's absolutely popping off, though. They're able to just run through here and clean everyone up that's left over on the point. So they're able to take back the point here and only a few ultimates used on both sides. Yeah, but Citizens having the, the all-important May ultimate and just showing you that they, they knew coming in, okay, Shatter Dream's going to look to use that May ult. They, they disengage very well, don't lose anybody, come back with the Shatter High Noon. 
Um, and it's just it's just an absolutely great great play for him in this. So they should be in a very solid spot to win this next fight. Yeah, and just tossing that bomb back there right now to try to buy them some space. So that way they can run up and try to catch someone off guard. But I don't think they see Zeus in the back. And actually, Boat throws out that Blizzard, but it was eaten by Vanguard. Zeus, though, still able to pick up a kill. And it looks like Korean Snacks the next to go down. Picks going back and forth. But right now, it looks like it's way more uh, in the favor of Shattered Dreams as they run forward trying to get Zeus who just really seems to be undoing the damage here, but Mercio able to find a pick themselves onto the May, so they don't have to worry about getting walled off or anything. Still, picks going super back and forth onto this point, just trying to keep it contested, but with a closer spawn right now, it looks like Shadow Dreams might be able to make it back sooner. All the team play in the world can't, can't uh, you know, overcome the D.Va ult just eating your mail. so played around it perfectly, but that's the D.Va, that's the power of D.Va, able to completely negate an ult with just the right click, so very nice to play from Vanguard, and that, 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 Positioning that I have here is just, it's going to be a very long time for citizens to come back, and it's very hard for them to, to contest this. They would have to play uh, really, really, uh, really strongly here against this high noon. Yeah, and the May Wall was thrown up there, but 60 got walled up themselves from Dash. Now Zeus answering with a high noon of their own a little bit later on. Both these Rhines getting close to the Shadow Nora actually having it. The Nano's gone through already from Alexio. They're trying to run up here and find themselves a kill. They do find one onto 60, being the first one to go down. Zeus doesn't really have their counterpart to contest them too much, so they're being a little bit more aggressive here. Green Snack, of course, was frozen, so they couldn't push up too much, but now that they also have the pick on Onoro, this is the time for citizens to start moving up there and securing a lot of those kills. Leo Cake's being an absolute boss. I, I don't know how she got away with that, to be honest. She just dove right into the McCree, killed, took out 60, survived, you know, got the support she needed, and uh, got out of there scot-free, so very nicely, very nicely played. I don't I don't know exactly how they enabled that, to be honest. It should not have been possible, especially since 60 had got the Nano, so really nice play, and that's going to be huge for them, and, and only a minute and a half, this is looking very dire for Shadow Dreams all early on. Shattered Dreams does have quite a few ultimates going into this next fight, though. Uh, but that is to say if they didn't lose Dash, so now they have to back up and wait for Dash to respawn so that way they can go in for a better better fight because Dash has that Blizzard. They have that big fight-winning, potentially fight-winning ultimate, of course, if it doesn't get eaten by the Diva. So that's just buying more times for Citizens. So now what looked like it could have been a pretty good fight for Shattered Dreams, getting a little bit more percentage with their ultimates is looking good now for... Uh, the side of citizens. They need to decisive fight here. This is such a long respawn for the attacker, so they need to get taken really decisively. Yeah, they throw down the blizzard. Doesn't get taken by anybody and actually walled up Korean snack. So the shatter doesn't really land on anybody. Already having two picks, so it looks like they're going to be able to cap this point. Now it's just playing cleanup, making sure they get as much time on the clock saved as possible. Squid jumping on the point with a big anti, of course. Probably not going to see too much value coming out of that because the rest of the team is down, but, you know, go out with a bang. Oh, a little friendly fire there on the side of Citizens with a uh, boat lifting Korean Snack up when he shattered, so not getting anybody. Not sure if we got anybody anyway, but that still feels pretty bad. Um, regardless, they're in a really good spot, uh, Citizens at least, with only two minutes on the clock for Shadow Dreams. But um, with that being said, hopefully they can make something use of the Nano and the Beat coming in here for Shadow Dreams. Yeah, and it looks like actually in the back line, the Ana flanking around. The sleep goes on Anora with the bomb in the back, not able to find anything. The Blizzard now on the point as well. Squid getting taken out, so that's a lot of healing they're going to miss out, but this Blizzard was just big enough. They paired it with the beat. They're able to go forward and clean up the rest of these kills here. So with about a minute 30 remaining, probably going to get another one or maybe two good fights in here for the offense. They might have been able to save that beat, if I'm not mistaken. It did look like they took the fight pretty, pretty um, convincingly. You know, Nora was, was frozen up the entire time. Very strong uh, freeze from uh, Boat. But with that being said, they still at least have the high noon. Maybe they can zone out and farm a little more ults here. But uh, Shadow Dreams is coming in with a very, very big advantage. Yeah, what I'm curious about is how this high noon is going to be used. It looks like they're just trying to use it to zone them off really quick. The wall was up in their face, so they weren't able to see anything. But the Shatter comes through from Nora. It looks like it's able to pick up three as they get to move forward here. But that's only if Nora doesn't get frozen. Q-Tip was able to get a boop off, and I think Vanguard was as well, unless that was just a killing blow on a boat there with the boosters. So it's looking pretty good now for the offense as they're able to move forward, not really losing any of their uh, players here. So just cleaning up the rest of these kills. Squid, of course, taking that plunge off the edge to reset themselves. And <laughs> actually, Mercio getting a poop off on a Q-Tip. Oh, well, that, hopefully, the Lucia should be able to get a good time, but the most important thing right now are the three big ults that um, Shadow Dreams has with the bomb and the high noon being very good at zoning ults. JK, 60's dead. Yeah, but Zeus just coming around the side. No one notices him, so it's just going to be an easy kill. Just, oh, hey, you're looking forward. Well, guess what? I'm on your side here. I'm just going to pop you in the head, pop you one in the body here, as now they get to move forward. Noro going down as well. So it's looking pretty good. Yeah, um, that's that's very unfortunate for for uh, Shadow Dreams because with with the Diva Bomb and the High Noon, much less the the freeze, like you, you're able to zone out the enemy team so long that it just they have to, uh, in, in a sense 
um, put, throw in a sacrificial lamb. So you have somebody contest the cart, right? Otherwise, you're going to capture. But if you have a high noon going, whoever's going to go in there is going to die unless, you know, they, they, they shoot into like a diva matrix where you just sacrifice a shield and nobody else is in sight. So, um, they were, they were in such a good spot. They still are technically, but it's just going to be very hard with only 11 seconds left for them to come back, especially with their main tank being dead. Um, so they, what they would hopefully like to do um, is to use this bomb to get in, um, but it's going to be very hard to pull off um, because it's such a long distance from that spawn. And with only 10 seconds left, even with the Lucia boost, it's, it's, a t it's a lot to ask. Yeah, and I think the big thing about the Lucio is going to be, you know, they're so close right now, Mercio, with that ultimate that if they are going to be able to build it mid-fight, it could potentially, you know, get them secured here on this defense so that way they don't push it anymore. Um, but Leo Cake, she's coming close to a, uh, a bomb, so if they build it mid-fight, that's something they're going to have to be careful of in case Dash still has that blizzard, so you can't really throw it out there willy-nilly. Uh, that's something you're always going to have to be worried about and just going in with absolute aggression right now. It looks like they got the sleep on a vanguard. It looks like the blizzard is also making it down, so they get to walk forward here, able to get two, make that three picks here. All the ultimates coming out as fast as possible, so they're not going to have any if they're the stagger is going to be able to come out here. Korean snack is going to come up very soon, and they're not getting fast enough kills here. It looks like Leo Cake's the only one on point, just trying to do as much as she can. Coming back now on the Hammond, so there's going to be a little bit more stall potential here. They're able to get on the point and make that three of them so far. They're really just looking for these picks, and they throw in the Blizzard, able to land onto the point. Dash on the other side of that wall, if they can go around and pick them off, this could be very big for them in trying to hold this here. They're actually able to get Q-Tip instead. Forget about Dash, they were still up for quite a while, but this Blizzard and now the Nano to follow it up, looks like it's finally going to be able to bring them in here. The bomb behind doesn't find anybody, but there's very little to find, as now they were able to make the hold very very impressive both parts of those of the of that last attack was was surprising the fact that uh i guess i failed to notice how far back the cart has rolled so fortunately for shadow dreams the cart rolled back fast enough for vanguard to be able to get to it with his ult so he didn't have to lose his mech um but on the flip side of that squid was the last person to die on citizens and he took out his counterpart in alexio right before he died and that alone i think was was the reason as to why they were able to take that point or sorry defend that point and then prevent shadow dreams from taking that third point so Huge shout out to him. Somehow doing, he just got in the back line and, and hit two or three um, left clicks on him and and took out Alexio. And that that once you lose your Anna, like you need to you need to close it out real quick because once you start, they start coming back. Once we saw Shadow Dream swap into the ball, the May, all, uh, Lucio, all those really good start. We you know they swapped Lucio. They had him, so that's even better for them. All those good stall heroes. Um, it's just a snowball effect, and so that that was a very very uh, crazy third point. Yeah, it can, it can be a hard thing to get around when there is the stall because of how close that is. And it's like, if you're not getting all the kills stacked up onto each other, it feels like it's basically impossible. But It's like a 2CP. You, yeah, it's like, it is pretty much like a 2CP. Honestly, yeah. the spawns are so close. But mm -hmm. what do you think would be like the deciding factor on if citizens are able to, uh, you know, get this uh, pushed far enough here so that way they could make it basically to the third point? You know, what's yes. going to be that changing factor that allows them to go that extra distance? So uh, the fir for the first point, not make the mistake that, that Shadow Dreams did and work in that uh, that enclosed area, you know, because when, when you see the enemy team get close to you, you know, engage you and you're in that enclosed area around, around the statue or anywhere in the first point, because there's a couple different ones, especially in that hotel, avoid that mistake. Also, um, I mean, it's hard. It's easy to say, but try to what, not get your, your ult eaten. Like, like uh, don't let Vanguard eat another ult. That's obviously going to be a big deal. Otherwise, it's just solid team play and not, and not staggering which which we saw uh, shadow dreams do a couple times as well and try to take duels unnecessarily it's fair enough and right now the only change we're seeing is there's a brig on the defense here so they're trying to keep that staying power not really trying to go for that speed boost super aggression but could it play off well for them here we'll have to find out as they're going into the fight the sandwich is happening between the may walls here people are going low korean snack getting slept and anti so they're going to be able to get taken out very fast here by 60 seeing them on the ground and anti spirit it's you know it's a free kill hurry up and go in and get that and zeus right now is having a little bit of a struggle with 60 in the back but zeus of course able to pull that off the 1v1 champion still holding their title but the rest of the team not able to pull anything off as they have to back up here the may walls out they're putting in some damage but they have to back up to the point but another good sleep onto korean snack is going to slow it down now oh, he's got to get woken up are he being back up though? So maybe they aren't gonna have as much time as thought. And a pretty good anti nade lands on a few of the players here. Q tip being the first one to fall on the last of this part of this fight. The nano comes out for both of the Rhines. Now Leo Cake, she's frozen in the back, trying to deal with Dash, able to pick them up eventually here. 
So it's looking pretty good. They're able to get a few kills. Just this baby diva, diva uh, still on point for a little bit longer. Now running up and trying to get as many exit kills as they can. That's what I was talking about, the unnecessary duel. That duel that 60 took against Zeus, it's good. But the problem was he was too close. So he let he let 60 get this, the the flashbang on him. And, he, and Squid was spam healing Zeus, but it's not enough to keep him up through the, through the 60 spam with the flashbang. So that alone cost him the first point, I'm quite positive. Yeah, now going into the rest of these points here citizens of course with the ult advantage pretty pretty big for the time being here But of course they aren't too far away on the side of shattered dreams to build these up You know, maybe a little bit longer of a, of a fight going on here They should be able to get it mid fight of course depends on how fast they take them out though Starting off with the blizzard here not quite able to eat it a few people getting frozen a good may while to keep them trapped in there Noro being the first to go down so losing on your main tank and now losing on your maze Zeus with two headshots right now as they get to move forward Vanguard just going on the point to try to stall it out for as long as possible. The rest of the team has already gone down, so might as well just go on there, die to reset yourself, and might as well stop them from progressing the part for as long. Progressing the part for as long. This shows you why White Seal is such a good team. When they get that space, like they, you're respawning all the way back at point three for Shadow Dreams, they're t they're putting their their May in a spot to where he can easily flank and get a, an uncontested mail, which freezes every single every single person basically in Shadow Dreams, or makes them at least be out of the fight enough for the citizens to take a fight with just one ult, and then it's gonna be very very difficult for uh, Shadow Dream with with uh, citizens having four ults. Yeah, they're gonna start off with the rally though, so of course they're gonna have a little bit more shield going into it. They have to be careful. It's high noon still though, boosted up, but doesn't quite see any kills from it. The high noon now coming out from 60. The okay gets a good bomb in there to take out Alexio as they move forward, but chatter from both sides. One doing a little bit more damage than the other, bringing a few players down here. Now the diva bomb in the air might meet somebody, but doesn't quite as they're able to manage their way through to get inside. Now losing out on dash, they don't have the may wall. They get to move forward still here from citizens. They had to use all their alts, but they did for the other side as well. So no one could have any alts now as they push past and capture the second point here on King's Row with quite an impressive time bank. C citizens are on in the next level, dude. They, they use the high noon zone, then they get walled, but they, they wall uh, McCree up to get the, the to get his high noon value. But they come back, um, since Shadow of Dreams comes back in, and then they layer it with the Diva Bomb and get a kill. Citizens, citizens are playing very well right now. This is going to be very tough for Shadow Dreams if they keep continue to play at this level. Yeah, but right now really close to that blizzard so they could be able to use it this fight Meanwhile, Alexio has the nano so I imagine they start with that and that they do They're gonna nano 60 here as they move forward They're just gonna back up on the side of citizens not really wanting to lose anybody not get too aggressive here Just let that nano run its course so that way you can go in for the fight and have the advantage yet again All you did was trade time so now you have the advantage Zeus has this high noon going through right now They throw down the blizzard a few look like they're caught in that right now. Boat sleeping, of course, on the ground. But Zeus is just going to clean everybody up that's inside that blizzard. Make it four right now. Three of those being headshots. Vanguard out with the baby diva has to go down as fast as possible. Now it's looking pretty dire here for the defense. Yeah, this is such a bad place to be. Once you get your Ryan, May, and your McCree settled on points, it'll be very tough to take back. Yeah, thankfully they all went out the right side, so they don't have to worry about the contest on the left, but someone has to get on the point here. 60 with the high noon, looking for a kill. Q-tip going to be the first one to go down, so not what you want to see on the defense, and a good shatter, so that way no one can get to the point in time. Citizens capping it with about four minutes, I believe, on the clock. Maybe a little less, but about that. They didn't even, I don't even believe they won, they lost but one fight. I think the first fight they lost, and they won every single one after that. That's obviously going to be a recipe for victory. Um... Let's see, let's see what Squid here does. I'm, I'm surprised. Okay, this is where they, they layer their, their ultimates here. So they come back in after after using the High Noon and then let the, they let Shadow Dreams come Ooh. back in. Shadow Dreams at that point utilize their their High Noon and uh, which Cake Leo, uh, Leo Cakes used her Diva Bomb to zone that out and effectively negate that and get a kill at the same time. And that's when you saw 60, uh, Squid come in uh, with the reduced numbers land in a purple and at that point it was all over so their their ultimate usage is just is just really uh what's setting them apart i think in addition to the disengages so when they know when they're coming in with an ult disadvantage the plan is to try and bait it out and get out asap so we saw on the third point when um shadow dreams opened up with theirs citizens backed out and then when they come back in shadow dreams is not ready for it and they can't they can't disengage and even though the high new didn't get a kill per se, it put Shadow Dreams in a place where Boat comes in with the ult of his own and freezes everybody, and then they win that fight, and then at that point, the, the map's over. Yeah, an amazing job from Citizens to kind of keep that steamroll going on despite losing that first fight, of course, going on there. But like you said, able to cap it, and then being on top of that ultimate game, which is definitely something you need to do. Ultimates are just such a high value, high cost as well, uh, ability that you can use in the game. So making sure that you're able to manage all that course is very very good here and 
It looks like the ban coming through from citizens. They're gonna choose to ban Gibraltar first here, which uh, you know, I'm I'm a little surprised with that they're gonna start off with a ban on Gibraltar. I figured it might have been a ban onto some type of King of the Hill map, considering that's kind of what Shattered Dreams are best at, in my opinion. They're really good on those uh, King of the Hill maps. So starting with Gibraltar, which is I think they lost that map, but they were really close uh, against Sion with trying to cap it all the way. So they seemed really good on the map, but of course they don't really want to play on it like most teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'm citizens, I think of maps that that um, winning one fight is going to get you the most value. So I think they're looking to play 2CP the most because if you go into a fight and you take a convincing lead, like what we've seen them do multiple times, then obviously in 2CP, uh, especially on, on speaking on attack, then you gain one point basically. So and obviously when you're talking about second point of, of pretty much any 2CP, you need the cleanest of fights. And I think if we go to 2CP, you'll see citizens just in with record record times assuming shadow dreams isn't able to adjust with with what they're doing poorly in addition to um not being able to disengage or not uh with with may especially it's your job in a, in a lot of ways to prevent the enemy team from disengaging whenever you invest your your mail when you invest your high noon um and they need to be on top of that and understand that that's gonna be their win condition and look for them to prevent the enemy team from doing that in addition 60 um has taken a lot of unnecessary duels or and other people as well i saw um, I think Q-Tips and Alexio um, try and challenge uh, Zeus one at, one at a time, and that's just not going to end well when you go up against the Kree. Yeah, that ain't going to fly when you're going up against the guy with the mad <laughs> aim. And it looks like they're going to decide on the side of Shattered Dreams to go with Oasis here. So Oasis is, I, I like the King of the Hill maps. You know, Shattered Dreams, of course, definitely likes them. It's one of their best map types, if not their best. And... It can just provide so many different options for compositions when you're playing throughout the rounds because there's some of them that are a lot more, of course, close quarters, so you want to stick with that brawly, but there's others like uh, City Center where it's a lot more open and you can kind of run a dive composition or maybe even potentially on Garden if they want to go that route, they can do that with maybe a Far Mercy, you know? It, it provides itself a lot of options. So, you know, I think it's really going to be the, the team that's more flexible usually takes as the King of the Hill map, and I think that's probably going to be Shattered Dreams here. Yeah, I definitely, yeah, I agree. The, this is going to be their best shot. Um, if they can't win this one, it's, it's not going to look good um, going forward. Not even outside, just, you know, uh, much 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 less the score being 0-2. But um, you just it just feels like this this is their, the, the last stand, so to speak. Um, so I, w I do expect them to run something a little bit different um, because it does look like when it comes to metaverse meta citizens does have that that understanding and i expect that if citizens wins the first fight on on meta they'll be really aggressive and in a way to to just solidify their place like we saw on king's row and just make it very difficult for anybody from shadow dreams to even step back on the point much less the whole team take the fight and the point back yeah and one thing they also have to be worried about is what if citizens does run something that's a little bit more anti-die so maybe instead of uh running like the standard you know, May McCree, maybe they try to either change their play style, maybe they swap out the Ana for a Brig, maybe they swap out the Lucio for a Brig, maybe they want to go with a Reaper instead, you know, it can provide so many options to try to uh, take the picks before your enemy kind of goes at it here. Uh, those, of course, you know, being a little bit more niche your picks, a lot of times you'll want to kind of keep that McCree in case they have far mercy. It, it's a lot of trying to get into the opponent's head when you're going on a map like this, I'm not quite sure what they'll run because but a little bit more looser with it, you know, because they can go dive, they can go standard. But what we're looking at right here is going to be a mirror matchup, most likely, as I assume Boat will swap over to uh, a Reaper and May here. Yeah, okay, the Reaper. So they are a little bit worried about a dive coming in, I assume, by them going over to the Reaper. Or maybe it was just because they want to get back faster into the fight because of the Sim TP. Mm, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> yeah, well, the Reaper is going to give you some advantages, but not if... Um... Shadow Dreams solidifies himself in the top spot here. So Shadow Dreams definitely in a really great uh, position here. They want to keep the distance, obviously, from the Reaper. Um, so as long as they keep track of him, don't let him get the back line, this should be a, good, a really good position, uh, especially with McCree being solidified up on the high ground. Six, he's going to have his way with the entirety of citizens that peak him. Yeah, and because Dash has that wall, of course, they can choose to, you know, mold their point a bit more into the way they like it to make the fight more advantage for them as they go in here. And, of course, the wall coming up, but Dash is actually going to be the one taken out here. And now Noro follows behind as well. Citizen's able to get the first two kills here, so ultimately probably going to pick up this point as they're just getting these cleanup kills. Able to find the pick on Korean Snack. It doesn't look like it's going to be able to do too much, though. But Alexio seems to be the one fracking out right now on the side of Shattered Dreams. 
Yeah, he's peeking on the left side, but beautiful play from uh, Citizens Boat TP right up into the uh, the McCree Anna sitting up top ground, uh, high ground. And Leo Cakes comes in with the the Diva Matrix, eats the flash, and at that point, 60s forced off the high ground, and then that's the result you see there because of that. So very well played from Citizens. They're they're just playing this comp very well. They know what they're doing. Yeah, making sure they get onto the point fast here. Shadow Dream trying to make sure that the drop comes through. Trying to keep an eye on Boat, I imagine, as they go into the back line at any time. Zeus starting off with that high noon. Gets eaten by the Matrix, though, and a little bit of a pinch here coming through here as the Ryan and Lucio went on a little bit of a flank. But a good anti-nade on Noro is going to make sure they get taken out fast and losing it on Alexio. So you didn't have those heals to begin with, buddy. Everybody's going back to spawn now at this point. Just trying to make sure that, uh, you know, they don't get themselves too staggered out here with about 50% captured so far for the side of Citizens. Yeah, they, they just lost, completely lost track of Boat. He he just teleported into the back line, got right on Alexio, just 1v1 him, which is what you always want if you're on the team with a Reaper. Took him out real quick. 60 didn't even turn around until Alexio was already dead. So McCree and Anna need to be a 1-2 tag team duo to, stay, to keep this Anna alive. Otherwise, the Reaper is just going to have his way with her every single time. It's, and it, this is just looking very bad. They need to make that change real quick and avoid it as much as possible. And it looks like one thing they might try to do is to just get the Ana solidified on the high ground set with the D.Va. And the McCree can use their uh, Deadeye right now, pressure them off. Alexio, I imagine, is going to stay up there in Vanguard, of course, being close by in case that Reaper does decide to go up there. Launching in that bomb now, Zeus going down. So the winner in this McCree fight seems to be 60 at the point. But all that Death Blossom was eaten by the Matrix from Vanguard. Picks so far more in the side of uh, Shattered Dreams, I would say. But they also want to invest this May out here. You know, the points take a little while to try to contest. They're coming down. This is the last fight potentially here. They want to make sure they can secure it. So Blizzard, you know, might as well throw it down there to secure this fight win here. But that's only if the stall doesn't come through. And it looks like there's still a few players coming in here, trickling in. Leo Cakes trying to solve this point a little bit longer. Zeus has made their way back. Mercio on the point here. They find the pick onto Zeus pretty quickly here, but they lose out on their D.Va now. They no longer just have the mech. They also don't have the baby D.Va to try to help them out. They have to invest the sound barrier here so that they can get super aggressive, but a good anti onto Noro. Again, Noro going to be going down here. They need to watch out for these anti grenades. Of course, if you don't have that D.Va, it's going to make it difficult, but 60 still able to pop off on this McCree. They haven't been taken out quite yet, but Leo Cake's doing an amazing job of just stalling this point out. They've been in 99 for like 30 seconds. You can see the difference in fight wins between the two fights. When Citizens wins a fight, it's clean. They they kill the first three. Maybe they lose one person, but the fight lasts like 10 seconds. That fight lasted well over 40 seconds. I think Citizens was at 50, 60, 65, 70% before fight lasted, and they could have gone to 130 if it allowed them. And yeah, now, uh, going into this next fight, Squid has the Nano, so maybe you start with the uh, Nano Initiate. Try to draw them off the high ground as soon as they drop. You hit that Nano. So that we can get super aggressive into them. You know they don't have the beat. The anti comes down, gets Alexio. So Alexio has to back off and be careful. But they do get picked by Zeus, of course, being so low. That was a one-shot free kill for them as they move forward. And now the Nano actually onto Boat in the back line. Able to take out 60 super fast. And now the Death Blossom as well able to pick up two here. So like you said, that was a clean fight from Citizens. Yeah, I mean, it's just... It's just... King's Row Part 2, man, they just, they, whatever Shadow Dreams has a ton of bolts, they have a chance to win, but it's sloppy. When Citizens has an equal or better ult advantage, they don't overuse ults, and they win the fight cleanly. They just, their, their strategies are just on point. And obviously, the, the another benefit of having that Reaper is Nano Reaper is just absolute terror. So, they know their ring conditions, they understand when they're going into fights not to invest the, over invest the ults. I haven't seen them over invest a single ult, um, that I can, that I can recall. They just, they're, Shadow Dreams needs to make a big change because Citizens is just out, out playing them just, just straight up right now. Yeah, I think what I would like to see uh, more from Shadow Dreams, I know it's just kind of like that holding on to all and trying to make those team fights a lot, you know, a lot less messy, like you were kind of saying, but I'd like to see maybe a little bit more aggression. I think a good way to go about that is going dive, which is something they're going to do here on Gardens. You know, I want to see them be more of the, the ones that start the fight rather than just, you know, kind of waiting for citizens to maybe do something in hopes that maybe they try to make a mistake because that's what citizens like to do. They like to sit back and wait for you to make a mistake. They keep an eye open and that's, you know, what's kind of, I feel like been going on mostly in these fights. They see someone out of position or maybe they see somebody, you know, just being a little too aggressive or anti and they're just able to pick them off. Yeah, and but at the same time, the longer the fight goes, the more powerful the fair becomes. I'm not even talking about the barrage, so citizens they can make me to make it a, a decisive move in this fight earlier, otherwise the fair is gonna tear them apart. Yeah, but Zeus finds 60 on the tracer in the background, and they're in the back. 
so they're not going to have a lot of that uh, little poke damage from behind that should try to draw off a lot of that attention from the rest. Nora really able to find a pick here onto Zeus, though, so they're not going to have a little bit more of that longer range DPS here as they go forward and try to get the a little bit more damage on the Korean Snacks, but they've already kept the point, actually, from Citizens. I didn't notice that, and they should be able to hold on to this point. It looks like they're really just trying to play for the stall and letting uh, Shadow Dreams play more aggressive right now, but... That could come back to bite him in the butt. First one going down now, 60 as they get back is squid, so they're not gonna have a lot of healing. These tanks can't stay on point for as long. And finally, the cleanup's gonna come through here. Just the Lucio on point, but still they garnered themselves a lot of percentage. Yeah, the Shadow Dreams can just never, uh, seems to cleanly um, clear citizens off the point. They're just, there's just always one person on the point. And even even like, yeah, I didn't notice they'd taken it either. It's just Sneaky, sneaky uh, take. Alexio was in a good spot. The reason that Shadowdreams won that was Alexio was uncontested on the high ground. So as long as they can just keep Alexio solidified up there, you know, have the Diva um, and Farah, you know, kind of push everybody out off the high ground, then they, they have a really good shot of taking this. Yeah, and looking at these ultimates right now, Dash could hit a pretty big barrage, but also looking at Korean as they're really, really close to their shatter as they come up here. Maybe the Nano comes out to start off. I imagine onto Leo Cake, so she can be a little more aggressive onto the far, but the far in the back is going to be the one aggressing first here, getting the first pick off onto Zeus. The sleep on both up top, so Alexio has some time to go ahead and heal, waiting for the rest of their uh, teams to try to come back and help them out. Of course, it looks like Boat will have to back off here. They don't want to get targeted too quickly here. Tracer with that low HP pool has to back off. A good sleep on a Noro and an anti as well. Korean now able to just swing, but Noro's able to make it out of there. Being very, very low, they're going to be able to get healed up now. Zeus finds a pick on a 60 and a good Diva Bomb to take out the Farah in the sky. It's going to get res right back up though from Q-Tip here, and they're going to be able to hold on to this point a little bit longer. Yeah, it looks like Citizens is definitely uncomfortable right now. This is not the Citizens we've seen in the past, you know, First point away is and King's Row. Um, they're looking very disjointed. Um, the boat's doing a good job of getting onto Alexio, but the problem is he's the only one, so they need to get assistance up there for him. Yeah, and you gotta be careful of Zeus right now. They were able to take out Dash. Zeus does go down, so Q's tip still up. They could pop, or they already did pop the Valkyrie. Now Noro's got the Nano onto him. That's gone down, but they're still able to get these few picks here. 60 able to get two themselves here, really just being the only one on point. Leo Cakes. It's demacked, and I imagine they're going to try to stagger for a little bit longer here because they are really high in this percentage. Oh man, this is going to be very hard for citizens now. They, they have fast characters, but are they going to be fast enough? Because with 90% and counting, like, and citizens has all, or sorry, Shadow Dreams is all six on the point, it's going to be up to boat, it looks like, to, to contest and then try and pull something out of their hat because they don't, do not have a lot to work with, just pulse bomb and high noon. Yeah, and the support's in the back right now. The sleep's gone on to him. Q-tip's still up, but Alexio's going down to boat. So they're not going to have as much heals as they want to. It's just going to be that Mercy with the beam. They have to pop this Valkyrie to make sure as many people can get healing as possible. Or the damage boost, of course, if they're going in on a target. That's something they have to be careful of. Now they got to watch out as well. If they get too close to the ground, they might hit that Pulse Bomb onto them. Noro going really low and now getting taken down by Boat as they get the Nano onto them. Dash uses the Barrage trying to find something. 60 actually gets the Pulse on the Boat to take them out of the fight. And 60 still getting another kill. Q-Tip able to bring Nora back into the fight, so they have their main tank back. Of course, he is sleeping on the ground right now, and Zeus on the Doomfist, trying to put in as much damage as fast as possible. They're now missing out on Q-Tip, though, so that's a lot of heals. They still have both of their supports right now for the side of Citizens, but they don't have anyone else on point, relatively speaking, here. It's just going to be the Lucio and the Ana. I take that back. Just the Ana now with the Tracer going pretty low, so I imagine they're getting taken out next. They're down Noro still, though, so... They just really have to stall this point out, which is something, of course, that they have shown that can be very promising for them because Shadow Dreams does have an issue with trying to clear the point as they've shown so far. And having these big, high HP health pools on the point is absolutely great for them. But a good bomb to take out Zeus, so you're missing out on a lot of that damage potential coming through. And Kareem's neck as well going down, so that's that large health pool out of the fight. Just have to clean up this Lucio, and the Tracer's going to be next on point, but that's only if they make it in time. <laughs> Holy cow, both these teams look like completely different teams. I mean, S Shadow Dreams is still having some problems, of course, clearing Citizens off, but Citizens is playing a comp that, it, that is, to be to be fair, very, very difficult to take off this point. Um, Shadow Dreams, they're just playing it. They're just playing this comp very well. Uh, shout out to Q-Tip. He's very aware whenever his, his Ana's getting dove in getting dove so first one it was just boat that came up alexio didn't have, have that, that much a problem dealing with him alone then later in later in the uh later fights he um boat got assistance from leo cakes and that point q-tip was immediately on to alexio assisting him with the heels and at that point um it was enough to turn um turn them away i think he actually got a kill on boat um so shadow dreams is running this comp very very well they know what they're doing with with this company it just makes all their plays it just 
it's just throwing citizens for a loop in, in, a, in a big way, and it's just very, very nice to see that they they do have this trick in, in in their playbook. The problem is, can you make the same trick work on different maps? So maybe you try to run a variant of it. Maybe the, you try to run the ferry here, but it can be more difficult with the enclosed area. Um, but it, I've seen it run before, so I'd like to see them try it again or do something similar to that. Um, maybe, although it's like hard, it's hard to imagine something similar where we where we're able to have the same effect because that map with the playing with a Farah, it, it kind of forced citizens into playing that tracer that um, was exposed to many weaknesses that we saw there. Yeah. And I mean, playing on university now on Oasis, you know, it's a lot harder to try to get those dives because they're going to see where you are. You know, it's very, it's an open closed space. So you can run the Farah here, but the issue is really going to be the dive tanks. You know, the Winston that's going to be coming in is going to be very noticeable. You're going to see them in the air. You know exactly where they're going to be aiming for. You don't have to worry about them trying to come around a corner because if you see them go on high ground, you just position yourself in the room on the right so it's impossible for them to really get in there. And if they want to fight close, you know, you're probably going to have that flashbang. You're going to have the anti nade to go through there, which will also be the bio grenade, of course, that heals your own teammates up. That gives them that little boost. So a dive would be super hard to run here. I think if they want to run the Far Mercy again, that could be an option and try to keep some boots on the ground, of course, still. You know, I think that would be the best way they could go about trying to do that similar composition, but they can't really, I feel like they can't really pull it off here on University. I think it would be too tall of a task and it'd be really, really difficult. Yeah, and yeah, another another downside for Shadow Dreams is that May is so good on this point, right? So we've, we've seen that citizens with their May play, it's just, they just outplay. Basically, um, they know how to run the comp. They know how to disengage, use it to disengage and prevent the enemy team from disengaging like they would want to. So um, if I was Shadow Dreams, yeah, I would try to run something to where you expect them maybe to run a May um, and do something that works well with it, which which you would think dive works really well with their mobility of avoiding avoiding or getting over the, the walls or getting out of the way when she starts to freeze you. Um, and also getting out of the May ult in general uh, was a lot easier for mobile characters. So. Um, Definitely with this pause, they will have time to, to think of it. Um, so I really would be would be surprised if we see them play meta, um, try to go up against them again. Yeah, and while it's paused, let me remind everybody that there is that MVP poll down below. So of course, whoever you think is popping off, whether it be on the side of Citizens or Shattered Dreams, go down below and go ahead and vote for them. Uh, they'll come in for an interview. We'll be able to ask them some questions about the match, maybe uh, get some insight on the team. And, you know, it should be a little bit of a learning experience. Should be, a, you know, a good time. And... You know, I mean, going into this next one, we I've seen Doomfist played a few times here mm -hmm. uh, on University. You know, I mean, all these walls that are so close, if you land a right click, you're almost guaranteed to get that extra damage. And of course, if it's a squishy, you're almost guaranteed to get that kill, of course. So, I mean, yeah. you don't really run the May. I think you run the Doomfist over the May here in case they do decide to run something a little bit crazy like a Far, so you still have that McCree. But I feel like it could also still pair well with the May because if you do get that wall up onto that Rhine, you know, you can hit him with the Doomfist, you can hit him with a pin, you know, it can just lead to so many different combinations of those style of, okay, we just need a wall to hit and we'll be fine. Yeah, if, if, yeah, if the other team plays fair and you're playing Doom, then he can just go in through that corridor and just get straight in the back line, kill somebody and get out. Um, when, and when you're playing against the fairy, you want a quick fight, which is what Doom will prevent, present to you. But uh, we see Citizens going with the same Reaper comp, except they're using a, a Zarya now. So this is going to be very interesting. Uh, I think this is the first time we've seen Zarya. So. First time we've seen Zarya today here. The Maywalk comes up from Dash. Now, of course, they're just going to run in there, getting as much damage done as possible, taking out Leo Cake. So now that she's out of the fight, they might just want to back up here on the side of Citizens, not play too aggressive, maybe just wait to try to find a pick in here. But they're going to go aggressive on the side of Shattered Dreams. They know that it takes a while for them to clean up the point sometimes. So while they have this advantage, try to use it to its full potential, able to pick up two more kills. And now Frozen Zeus gets taken out as well. So they're going to be able to cap the point here at first. But uh, it will be scary to see citizens come up here with a grab so it's gonna a lot of eyes will be on vanguard as actually now they're swapping off yeah that, that shows you that, that the why zarya is just so much worse than diva in a lot of respects is that if you get caught in any bad position you're, you're just dead especially with the enemy team playing a may um so so this is doing the right thing coming in real quick so hopefully they can take this back without much of a hassle 
Yeah, both these mail walls coming up, so no one's gonna have that to try to block off anyone from the point here. Good sleep on to Zeus, so they're down on the Reaper, but woken up pretty quickly here. A good biotic grenade, so a lot of heals should be able to come through, but a lot of damage coming through now as that Reaper and the Nano Reinhardt just start going at the front line. The Nano does come through from 60, though. Boat's gone down, they use the High Noon, able to pick up Mercio, so this fight's looking a little bit more winnable now for the side of Shattered Dreams. Also able to take out Leo Cakes out of the diva mech, out of the game, back into the spawn room, and it's just gonna be Zeus left on the point here to try to fend for themselves. Yeah, so we saw the the citizens using the nano on the Ryan as opposed to the, the the Reaper. Definitely got some value out of it, but at the same time, Shadow Dreams come back with that nano McCree just getting that much more value, because once the, the position's opened up, it's all, it's a it's a open range for McCree to just have his way with the enemy team, so very nicely played for them to turn it around like that, and they're coming up on the mail super early here, so it's gonna be very good for Shadow Dreams. Yeah, but a good Maywall with an anti could spell doom for Noro here, oh, but no. the yeah, beat froze. was used. So maybe something could come from a Korean, goes for the Shatter, doesn't look like they're able to get anybody. I take that back, I think they got Vanguard, but the Shatter comes through Zeus on the ground. They had that Death Blossom, which could be so fight winning, but it looks like with a few people going down on the side of Shatter Dreams being the main tank and the May, it's going to be hard for them to try to keep this up here now as citizens look to take back the point here, but not only until they've built up so much percent for themselves. Yeah, so they've done it. Shadow Dream's done a good job. The problem is that this is just go, throwing back to earlier um, earlier matches where um, Citizens may play is just superior. They, they force so much pressure onto Noro, and then that caused Dash to kind of do a, a panic ult, and he got frozen right as he was throwing it, so he didn't even get his ultimate off. So, um, But this coming in, they got five ults inside of Citizens. Surely this is going to be a fight win for them. It's looking good, at least for them. The Maywall comes up here. Not quite able to pick anybody off, of course, because that Diva does have that booster to get back up. They're down the Maywall. They know they can walk in, but Zeus hiding behind, ready to use this Death Blossom, but they've been boosted up. Zeus on, or 60 on the high ground now with that Maywall. Able to find the pick on a Korean stack, and now Vanguard able to eat the freeze from Boat. Zeus using that Death Blossom, able to take out Noro, but does get slept, so they aren't able to use the rest of that here. But if your citizens so far, it looks like you're pretty happy with this fight, and now you're able to go in and get a few more kills potentially here, though. Zeus going very low. Does get the kill on the dash, though. They do have to back out, and that's a fight win for them. They, they did have to use three ults, Reaper, May, and Lucio, so it's pretty expensive for them, but, you know, you'll take a fight win over losing the point any day. Um, coming into this, they, all the, the biggest thing they have outside um, the bomb is just the nano, so hopefully they can get uh, Zeus in the back line to start causing this pavic. Otherwise, it's going to be looking really good um, for the side of, of Shadow Dreams. Yeah, I imagine they're gonna start off with the nanos here pretty soon. I imagine Alexio will probably pop theirs first to try to create some space. Potentially good diva bomb here from both sides going into the back, and actually the diva bomb from Vanguard able to find Leo Cake. So losing it on your diva during the fight, they're gonna have a pretty good advantage to start off here. They have to use the nano right now on both of the Reinhardts to try to make sure that they can take this fight win. This is potentially last fight territory, but the shatter is a bit better from Korean. Of course, they do get frozen up though, so maybe they have a little bit more window of opportunity to get something done, and that they do. They take out Squid and Zeus. Q-Tip is so far the only one to go down, it looks like, on the side of Shattered. They invest this Blizzard here that May is in there just trying to fend for themselves, and it looks like they're going to be able to take this point back, and I don't think anyone's going to be and able to even make it in time. Mm, nope. Nice wall. Nice wall from Dash, yeah. Oh, man. Nice wall with the, a nice wall. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Um, yeah, so <laughs> the the McCree 60 the, it was just huge, so he flanks really well. The problem is when Citizens is playing a, a, a McCree as well, he just he just raises his uh, flank and takes them out. But without without a, a McCree, um, he was just that 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 flank that he did just got the maximum amount of value you could ever ask for, and just went completely uncontested and just turned that last fight. So I think 60 alone was, was the reason for them to take that last fight. Um, Korean Snack did a great job of being in an awesome spot to to counter the the the, the stun from Noro and then had his own uh, uh, shadow there. So I think Korean Snack did very well in that last fight too. It's just when you let that McCree um, just get get on his own in a wide open or the medium like area that that map allows him to get into that perfect range for him where he's getting maximum damage on his shots while also not being in melee range or, or in a range where D.Va can really mess him up a whole lot. That's that's exactly what you want on your McCree and, and 60 took the most uh, advantage of that. It was great. Impressive play here is now the score is one to one. No one in the lead, of course, because that's how one to one works. That's uh, they're they're even numbers because they're the same numbers. Uh, but you know, I mean, Shattered Dreams, they got that win there. <laughs> Uh, they're going to be able to pick the map ban. I assume they're going to go with Full Sky or some other form of 2CP. Meanwhile, citizens are going to want to go to that uh, 2CP map. Uh, so just going to have to wait for Shadow Dreams to kind of make that decision on which one they want to ban. I imagine it'll be Full Sky, but 
Uh, you know, it could be something else. Maybe they feel all right on Vosca and just had a, a bad last few, you know, matches. Maybe their heads were a little under the weather. Uh, it happens, but um, it definitely seems like they're weak as 2CP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I would be very surprised if they did not ban a 2CP and that Citizens did not pick a different 2CP than they banned, but um, we'll just have to, to see how those uh, decisions play out. We'll let you know as soon as we see them. However, um, just FYI, you are... Um, we have enabled the drops for the Twitch chat, so you're welcome. Just uh, enjoy and uh, enjoy those in-game bounties, at least. And uh, also, we do have the MVP poll still going on, so um, we've we've highlighted a number of different people. I try to try to get everybody, but unfortunately, especially if you're a support, you don't get that much mention. But if you've seen any supports or uh, or rather that you you want to highlight, feel free to pick them as well. So exercise your right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do it up, do it up, and. <laughs> While we're still on this little bit of a uh, break period between the maps here, uh, let me also remind you guys to follow us here at Star Esports. Go to the Discord, connect there, follow us on Twitter, and you can go check out the YouTube channel where you can get all the different uh, VODs that we've already played through. So if you're a team looking to create some of your own strategies from some you may have seen here, whether you may be a team that competes in the tournament and you want to make sure you're up to date with whoever you're going to be facing, that's a good way to do it. And of course, if you're in the Discord and you're on the Twitter, you're going to get notifications for when we're going live, any changes that could be made. And of course, if you're following us here on Twitch, well, you're going to make sure that you're kept up with all the action to begin with. Yeah, so just to update, Chow Dreams did ban Volskaya, no surprise. However, Citizens chose Eichenball, which which is surprising to me. Um, with uh, with how they, how they look on taking, you know, uh, very decisive fights, but obviously that first point is is indeed a control point, so um, or a capture point. Anyways, um, so they, they they should look pretty good going into the second point. And if they get, um, if they're on, they will be defending here first, if I'm not mistaken. So with that that in mind, if they if they do go with that Reaper, they can just jump onto him. But you don't see that a whole lot. So I would be very surprised if they did not just stick to the McCree that's worked for so well. I mean. If they just go meta versus meta, they've been doing so well against Shadow Dreams. I would be very surprised if they did anything else. Yeah, and I'm pretty excited to see Citizens pick Eichenwald here because this is a map that they ultimately rolled, uh, to not have a better word to say it, Scion, because they were able to cap all three points on Eichenwald and then full hold uh, Scion. So Eichenwald, probably one of their strongest maps, uh, at least from the, the, the previous matchup that we watched. It's definitely, you know, it, they they are good on it. They've shown they're good on it. Now we just have to see if they're still good on it. I don't imagine a lot changes uh, in a few days' time, but mm -hmm. hey, who am I to judge? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it can even be, you know, immediately changed if you're playing a different team, right? Like, you can feel super confident on a map against one team and then uh, super unconfident and look terrible on it against another team, just how the team plays it, or, you know, if they're a better team. But I, I, I would be highly surprised if Shadow Dreams can play Eichenwald, you know, significantly better than Scion. So um, don't think that's going to be an issue here. So I'm um, just an update. Uh, looks like uh, Shadow Dreams is looking for a... Uh, their, their main tank is laggy, which is never a good thing. You don't want any player laggy, much less the main tank, much less the one that's filling in. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess if you do want a character to lag, it would have to be Ryan just because he's swinging. So he's not like you'd have to aim or anything. Yeah. Like if or he's just holding right click the whole time. Oh, well, yeah. Right. So, of course. One of the two. Yeah. I mean, if, if you don't, it, like, especially if you're shattering and you're lagging, then they might be, not be able to block it as easily, too. So there's that, that counterplay. Ah. Uh -huh. There's some mm -hmm. there's some high level str uh, strategic plays being made right now by the router, uh, <laughs> unknown to Noro. <laughs> The invisible hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, the power of the internet coming in to try to help out Shattered Dreams in a little bit more different of a way than they probably expected it to. But, yeah. I mean, internet, going into Eichenwald, mm -hmm. you know, Shattered Dreams, they've run the dive before. I think first point, you might be able to do it, and it can work pretty well in the second considering Castle has all these different vantage points where you can go up top and try to uh you know go about the dives different ways like that yeah. so maybe we see the far mercy ran here with a dive to try to counter whatever citizens might run whether that just be standard or maybe something a little bit different yeah it definitely opens up like it's the i can such an interesting map in that way right like the first map the first point rather is really good um for farah you can use that middle clock tower to kind of just bob and weave and and get a good vantage point but the second point it opens up and then 
that's when Widowmaker comes out to play. And the McCree starts to gain a lot of value. The, the hit scans and they get their range all the way through second point. I um, mean, the third point is where you see crazy characters like Junkrat come into play and just those close range characters. So that's why Eichenwald is just a, a really good test of your flexibility because very rarely do you see a team roll through second and then third with the same same exact comp. You know what I mean? So. Um, that's, that's one of the reasons why I like watching. I don't like playing it for that reason. I don't like to do that, but I do like watching it. I will admit. Yeah, it, it can be interesting to see how teams go about it. Because, I mean, they could just run whatever they think they're going to be best at going through the second point on first to try to cap it and then go through to second with it. Maybe they swap then, or maybe they try to stay on the whole comp the whole way through, uh, which is seen when... The meta is definitely a lot more defined, but I feel like right now you can kind of get away with going with these a little bit more different of strats uh, coming through here. Citizens are going to be the one to start us off here on defense, of course. So, you know, right now, I mean, just looking at what they have, which will be unlocked you in a relatively about five seconds, it's, it's looking pretty standard. Not going to lie. You're not going to see something super crazy coming out from them. But rather on the side of Shattered Dreams, maybe we see this Far Mercy and the Widow stay on the field. Yeah, Widow Widow can be very difficult to make on the attack, but of course she's you know she's either getting all the kills or she's just worthless. So we'll see what 60 can do on her. Yeah, just trying to find an angle to get out here. Manages to try to put in a little bit of damage. Not quite able to pick up a kill, but does find Squid. They were hit with that rocket, so they were a little bit low there. Now that they're missing out on those main heals, they can be a lot more aggressive on the side of Shattered Dreams. They don't have to worry about it. Now that Zeus has gone down this far, it's pretty much just got free play. Now taking out Boat as well and make that Korean stack. Dash getting the 3k right now and Leo Cakes going down as well. That's going to spell the last person on the point there. So pretty fast first cap and I assume they'll stay on a relatively same similar composition here going forward. Yeah, this comps works really well. Assuming Zeus doesn't pop up and start destroying the Pharah. Citizens just needed to make a play. Like Shadow Dreams was, was getting into ideal positions, and then you know they they executed the uh, the flanks maneuver and just pincered them in and got the kill. So very well played by them. The citizens needs to start taking action a little bit earlier. Don't let them get in that position. So uh, we do see Korean Snack swap onto the Winston. Very good, very good idea to get onto that Widow. Uh, we'll see how Vanguard deals with it. Try to you know assist his Widow and or uh, Anna from the from the Winston. So. Um, we do see Dash coming back. He's got his barrage, so he might be making a good play here if he gets a, a barrage on the mid back backline. Yeah, you can see Dash was going in the backline with the Mercy Pocket, able to find Zeus as the first pick here. The Shatter coming through from Nora right now, not quite able to pick anybody up. They were just barely out of the way, and the Anti coming through means that Nora can't get any heals. Korean Snack able to put through so much damage with that. Uh, a little Tesla cannon they have. They're going to use the barrage now to try to secure a fight win for them. They get Korean Snack down, so both teams down their main tank. Zeus making the way back now on the Widows, trying to get a little bit more of an off angle. I think they've already been spotted out by Dash, and now getting Dove upon have to back up now. So they're going to be able to take some more progress on this cart. And Mercio actually a little far away from the rest of the team does get taken out well as well by the cart. Losing out on the Diva too now, so it's looking good for this defense to come back in here shortly. Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of this, man. The, the, the comp from Citizens is so awkward. The Widow Tracer, that's such a, like, like crazy comp, but they're... they're they're making it work, although, as I say, I never mind Dash has something to say about that one. Yeah, Dash Dash has a Nano in their pocket as well as a Mercy, so they're just going to be able to go forward, take out both the DPS, so the only one really able to contest them right now is going to be Leo Cakes. Squid going down as well, about three of them on point. A good anti coming out here, so Korean Snacks is going to be low. They're going to invest the sound barrier here, and the bomb has been thrown up into the air. Now the barrage as well being used. Leo Cakes going a little bit lower, almost able to take out Dash going up there into their face, but not quite able to... And it looks like Mercio is going to be the only one on point here to try to stall it out. But as I say that, but able to get a few kills wow. actually on both supports before getting taken out. That was huge. Yeah, very impressive. Too bad it's all for nothing, but you know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's, it, 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 hopefully it gets some confidence going into this next point. Oh, they swaps to the Sombra, which is not something you usually see, but I do understand the point of it. Especially, nope, we still have a crease. Okay, there we go. I was about to say, if you stay on, stay on Sombra, that's pretty much suicide. Um, so hopefully they can use this May because they their May has been so good. So I'm very surprised we just see it now. But um, this is a great place for for May to, to make the most use of it. So I would not be surprised to see full hold. But with almost five minutes to go, it's gonna be very tough. Yeah, I mean they were just able to put through so much damage and get through with the time and the focus dives. That's gonna be so difficult going forward here. But Anana getting stuck on the cart could lead for them to find an opening there. The May wall coming through right now from Dash to try to split some of the team up. Sixty getting a few kills here so far. 
Of course, they are down their honor right now for the side of Shattered Dreams, so they're not going to have as much healing as they would have liked to. Going forward, they're just trying to look for these picks right now, but Vanguard getting taken out of the mech. They're going to try to invest this Shatter here. Nora going down pretty quickly afterwards, though, so it looks like this defense finally able to take a fight win, but still, there's four minutes left on the clock. Yeah, it just, I mean, I'm, I'm very surprised that, that Shadow Dreams got away with it, as many people as they did. They they, they hang around a very long for a time when it, the fight's clearly lost, but as it stands, you know, they're coming in um, with, with all the swaps that Citizens has had to do, like, they don't have a whole lot of ults, so that's something that's working in, in Shadow Dreams' favor as they're coming up on the High Noon and the and NS. So hopefully they can make, have some big value out of this. I'd like to see them use the D.Va and just dive on the back line, but regardless, Ryan will get some big value with Nano, of course, as well. Yeah, as always, you know, just that big hammer that's shining now, you know, it's definitely scary, but putting it on a 60 with a high noon could potentially be scary. A wall up to try to, you know, find a little bit more damage. Finally going to be able to draw that, and now they're missing out on that shield. Korean also being frozen up right now, so they can't get super aggressive. The wall does come up, though. Of course, they do go into that little freeze mode there from Dash. Both of these blizzards are out right now, but Leo Kicks gets the pick onto Q-Tip, but... Now it is back and forth, it looks like, you know, the pick's not really going either way. Three players down for both of these teams, but it looks like the defense, or the offense, rather, is going to back up because they know that defensive spawn is so close that they won't be able to actually try to snowball it into something. Yep, uh, this, is the, this is the Shadow Dream problem we've seen so far is the fights, they, they, they technically could have won that had the spawn not been so close, but they just aren't clean wins. Um, whenever you see the enemy team has a has a has a mail, it's gonna be very hard to pull it off. And especially with citizens having three ults, it's gonna be. Hopefully, they just don't invest in anything if they get it mid fight and just let them w let them win. Yeah, and with a good right main to start it off to try to freeze the tanks could be good here. Korean already frozen up. Zeus, though, using this Deadeye to try to make him back off. Finds the pick on Onoro. If you're standing behind your Ryan when there's a high noon, just don't do it. Not a good idea. They're gonna lose their barrier, and someone will go down because of it. So that's something you gotta be careful of. Maybe flash that matrix last second, but. Maybe it was off a cooldown, but that's going to ultimately lose them the fight here. Okay, yeah, well, the Shadow Dreams has a good has a good opportunity here. They're going to come up with High Noon, Bomb, and uh, Beat, and Nano. So hopefully they can make those work against the the, the, the two ults that uh, Citizen are currently working with. But with that being said, it, you know, the the Nano alone could be enough to power um, Orion through your, through your team if you're trying to go in, so. Yeah, and starting off with the Nano, of course, on the McCree against 60. It's worked before, but will it work again? Losing it on dash to begin with isn't very good, but boat going down, so they have the trades here. Leo Case also gets taken out of the mech by that bomb, so a lot better than what I originally thought. Now they get to move forward. Korean Snacks, though, does have that uh, nano on to them. The anti was on to Nora as well, so they have to be careful right now. The heal's coming through. They go for the shatter, not able to find anything. That shield goes up just in time, but Korean Snacks so low, able to get taken out fairly fast here. Zeus trying to find something with a high new manages to find Vanguard's mech here, but it looks like as long as they're able to clean this up, Leo Cakes being the only one on point. This immortality now, though, Squid and Korean now back on the Hammond, joining them on point here. They have to make sure they get this fast, and a good anti-nade to try to kill that Hammond so they get no heals is a good way to do it. The wall comes up here. The Lucio Mayor now the ones trying to contest this point is this Tracer as well running around. The Blizzard does come down, though, so this could be big. Anybody on that card is going to get frozen, I imagine, targeted down very, very quickly, but 60 in the back now using that high noon. Finds the kill on Immersio. Now it looks like it could be their time. They take out that Immortality. 60 manages to pick up three so far to just Zeus. And now just Boat as they get booped back and able to cap it. Not only cap it all the way, but also with about 55 seconds on the clock. Unfortunately, though, less than a minute. So they definitely will, would, would love to have, get it over a minute. Um, but regardless, very, very strong. Hard to take that third point. The, the high noon nano value they get, they're getting is, is awesome. So, I mean, in general, the high noons have been really good. Um, that's what's been losing, the, you know, winning them those fights, especially since they lost somebody early. I believe it was uh, Dash they lost early, but 60 comes in and says, now we got this, and uh, wipes the floor with them. And the, the stagger was pretty good They, they did, uh, from Citizens. They did delay a little bit longer, but in the end, uh, the McCree, once they get settled in, is just is just too strong, especially with Alexio farming Nano as he, as he did so fast. It's just a get-out-of-jail-free card. For any character you try to focus down, you know, maybe they're frozen, especially if you freeze like a Ryan, a Nano on a Ryan when he's frozen, it's just going to get It's just, he's not going to die. So, um, Shadow Dream's definitely going to be really happy about the attack, and um, I expect that they will try to, you know, go away from the May versus May. I think they... they they're just not as comfortable on that, but generally speaking, they're they're McCree. They just I would never put sixty on anything other McCree for the rest of this this you know this whole series. Yeah, Zeus has definitely been a powerhouse in the McCree, but sixty's really been showing up here today. You know, Zeus kind of had it uh, a little bit better at first, getting a few of those mm. initial uh, picks to start off with, but now it's definitely more favoring sixty. So definitely an MVP candidate. Don't forget to go down below hit, hit. and vote for that.
uh, of course, if you feel like the time is right, which we're only one on one right now. This map is just going to make it two and one. So maybe you want to wait a little bit longer, which is what yeah. I would personally recommend. Uh, but we can see what they're running out of now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just hope 60 doesn't try to take any duels. The duels have not been going in his favor, but when, he, when he's shooting other people and or, you know, from range, he's, get, he's getting the better of them. So Citizen's making a very decisive play here. JK dash again. Dash. Already getting the super fast first pick onto Zeus, so now they're going to be able to run forward. A good main wall from both, though, to make sure that they didn't go in there and try to steamroll over them too much there. They didn't want to, uh, that defense to get any more all charge than need be. Zeus now coming back on this McCree. They're going to play a little bit farther back now on that Farah. Uh, well, that's the problem, is that you need to be really decisive with citizens, because if you don't, then eventually that, that can happen, right? So you need to be really decisive. You just need to have uh, Leo Kicks looking more out for it. Oh. Yeah, they lose out on dash, but the Rez is able to come up fairly quickly. Korean, though, very, very far in their back line now because of that uh, because of that charge. But it looks like it's not going to matter too much to them. Actually, Leo Cakes is going to be the one to go down, so losing it on her right now could be big because now that far, uh, none of those bro or none of those rocks are going to get eaten. It's really just going to be up to Zeus to try to do something about that. And now they have no tanks on the field for the side of Citizens, but Zeus still able to clean up here. Both of these McCrees today have really been showing their prowess here as they're able to pick up two, so Zeus going on a little bit of the side flank here. The Nano comes out onto boat, so that Freeze is going to be able to do some damage. Zeus gets taken out eventually here, and this defense just trying to hold on to it for a little bit longer here, but I think Citizens might be able to come back in time with it. That is unless, of course, Noro gets on there, and the Barrage is through with the Nano, able to find two, make that three, actually, not counting that Barrage in there. Didn't realize that. They're going to be able to hold this defense here. And very, very close. They gave up about a tick and maybe a little bit over or under a half. But, you know, ultimately, they're able to keep it. Ultimate-wise, they're looking okay. They really only used three there. But on the side of Citizens, they didn't really use any. Yeah, and Citizens coming in with four big ults here. Make that five if you count the Diva ult uh, coming in. So they they very strong point. They just need to make sure that Dash doesn't get any one of those pick-offs pick because he's been doing a really good job of getting damage in early. Yeah, it's something they have to be careful about starting off with the sound barrier here. These uh, high noons coming through, a good shatter. Zeus is on the ground, 60 able to find two here. Despite the blizzard coming through here, the defense might be able to hold on to it a little bit longer as Dash is in the sky, putting through the damage. The supports and the tanks are the ones left. They're able to find 60 though. The res is coming through on Noro, back on the point. So they have that main tank back up. The bomb comes down, not quite able to find anybody, but buys them some time and some space that they much so need in times like these but now the bomb coming up from leo cakes also not able to find anything trying to get that far mercy out of this guy is really going to be their main goal i imagine here but boat uh, back now onto the tracer they no longer have this may so maybe this could help them out a bit more having more of the hit scan to try to deal with the far mercy in the sky but they got to watch out for behind they're able to get uh zeus but with so many picks right now coming in from the offense they're going to be able to cap this point not much time uh, as they had for Shattered Dreams, but still a pretty a pretty good feat. Yeah, they're looking like Shattered Dreams, you know, attacking out there, man. The, the fight's take, uh, taking a lot longer, and it's just not as clean. Eventually, they clear off. I think Boat with a huge... His his Tracer plays, just, he's just he's just a support killer this map. Um, he's, he's killing Alexio and Q-Tip like it's nobody's business, and so I think him being in a spot look at where he is right now he's in a, such a great spot to take advantage of him so 60 needs to be on top of this and just be looking out for him just listen for the pit of those of those quick tracer footsteps and i think that he can he can subdue the tracer nullify him completely yeah this tracer is probably going to build that pulse bomb mid fight so that's also something vanguard's gonna have to watch out for to try to eat that the wall up onto green snacks right now it looks like they got the anti going through very low but that immortality might keep them up a little bit longer boat actually manages to get 60 so the only thing that can really counter boat has been taken out they're able to run forward the nano has been used on a noro though so if they want to get close they're gonna have to take a little bit of damage the pulse bomb's been used onto them though to make sure that noro does go down low has to keep that right or has to keep their shield up instead of left clicking and swinging that hammer like they really want to and now losing out on noro and q-tip they're gonna have to back up yeah i was watching uh boat specifically the entire time and 60 went from 100 to zero in probably like three or four seconds it didn't get a heal so the back line not really uh on the same page when it comes to dealing with this tracer so they, that that's obviously uh, a big part of dealing with with tracer comes is that if, if you can just make him just be an annoying but not get any kills and he's gonna you're gonna you're gonna have a really good time of dealing with the, any team and you can just dominate the front line but as it stands they're gonna need to make a make a big hold here yeah starting off with 60s high noon able to find squid on the high ground because of that wall boost up very very big very good for them they're able to run back up here they do switch over back to the may off the tracer though so they have that wall to slow down that engage so that way they don't get pushed too hard up on and 
I'm going into this next fight. A few ultimates for both sides. I would like to see citizens go through the 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 castle now, like especially whenever you're. Well, I guess now that they have the high noon, maybe it's a little bit different. But yeah, okay. So using this main, they got to sneak right. In. Oh my god, it's gonna be great if they get in there real quick. But the the car is pulled too far back. Yeah, and the wall has been up to try to split the team, and that it does. Only a few of them up on those stairs, so they can't get too aggressive like they really want to. And now deciding to jump off to give up that high ground. The bomb on the point finds Alexio and Q-Tip as well goes down. Zeus using this high noon, able to find 60. 60 does get boat before they go down, but the rest of the team has already gone down themselves. Now is Vanguard, the last one on point. They're going to be able to keep on pushing this forward here with about a minute. Yeah, Citizen's just out, out rotating and just not getting stuck, you know, kill section off by the Maywall and, 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 and deleted by 1-1 and then pulling the trigger earlier with Leo Cakes pulling out her, her ult earlier here. Shadow Dreams might get a, uh, a hold here though, if they're able to test. Oh, and a Huge. pretty good bomb from Vanguard to go in there. The Shatter was big from Korean as they peeked around the corner and kind of did it preemptively. And now the Blizzard on point to get a few freezes here might be what secure them this fight win to make sure that this cart isn't pushed any further right now. But when it comes to numbers on the point, it's really in the favor of sh or really in the favor of citizens right now. But they're able to make their way back, of course, because that spawn is just a wee bit closer. It feels like dash back on the Doomfist now, trying to put in that quick, fast damage, and citizens backing up here so that way they don't feed any alt charge. And with only about 15 seconds remaining on the clock, it's going to be difficult for them to even get in there. That bomb for Vanguard they got two came through the, the the window, so for three it's good, like right through the basket, man. Freaking awesome. So with with the two support ults for Shadow Dreams, it's gonna be super hard for citizens, especially after the swaps they've had to make. Yeah, and Dash uh, messed up a little bit on their combination there. They're able to go underneath and find themselves back up to the point pretty quickly. The Korean sniping the first one down, so there's that large health pool gone out of the fight. But the Blizzard straight on to point. Noro, despite getting that nano, is probably going to get damaged pretty heavily here. But a good nade to try to keep them up a little bit longer up in the air. That's the bomb. Trying to find somebody finds nobody. Zeus, though, able to find the kill on the Noro. We hear Vanguard going down, I imagine, from that bomb action. Might have knocked them off the edge, now that I think about it. So looking at this point, there looks like they're going to be able to cap it here in overtime, but that's not going to leave them a lot left in the bank going in to try to capture this third. That's still going to be so disheartening for Shadow Dreams. That's that was a very tough thing that, that Citizen just did, especially they lost Korean Snack just to, he had a touch and just died immediately. So they did that five v six. So coming into this next point, they're going to uh, Shadow Dreams going to swap to the May, which is a great pick. Um, just go keep an eye out for Zeus now on the Tracer. So Citizen's playing some games with the Tracer due to the swaps they've had to make to, you know, come touch the point. So it's going to be a big, big fight here. Yeah, they got to be careful right now. This Pulse Bomb doesn't quite connect onto anybody. It was really close onto Alexio. So now they can kind of use that bomb a little more freely here. They have the High Noon going through. They're able to take out Korean Snack. So they really just don't want to use any ultimates they have in their bank. That being really only the uh, Tiva Bomb, of course. But they want to make sure that they can clean up this fight without any ultimates. And that they are doing. They're going up. They're being very aggressive and making sure they secure a lot of these kills. So now they might want to actually start backing up. But they're still going forward trying to get this Ana. Not quite able to do so because Leo Cakes is there, of course, with that Matrix to keep them safe. Yeah, and they won that fight with with uh, Mercio throwing out his uh, beat. Now he swapped to the brig, which is a good a good play. But they've got one more fight. This is the last fight for citizens. Otherwise, they're going to go down um, two to one. Oh, and losing out on Alexio to start off. They were close to that nano. They could have built it mid-fight, maybe even earlier in the fight here. The Maywall coming up now. They don't have any of those heals. Noro has to be so careful, just trying to keep that shield up to secure some more time off of that uh, or out of that bank so that way we can keep that point stagnant but it doesn't look like it's going to be to any avail as now the rest of the team is going down as well Zeus able to find a couple in that fight so they're going to have to regroup here you know they still have some time to do so but it's going to be difficult because you're going to have the shatter coming through here uh, or not the shatter coming through the blizzard coming through and the nano Leo Cakes has or almost has that bomb so it could be scary but Vanguard throwing theirs in the back right now able to find squid so they're missing it on the main heals Neuro gets nanoed in that blizzard to keep them up a little bit longer the shatter comes through not able to connect to anything boat going down as well now though so it's looking pretty good for this defense here they're pretty happy so far a pretty good blizzard as well right onto the point a good high noon from 60 answering Zeus's which got only one and now everybody that was there had to get off the point because of so many things going on so Shattered Dreams is going to be the one taking Eichenwald yeah that's very it's like they're they're changing before eyes are evolving it's been great uh great to watch and it's just that the fact that citizens came into the th point three with such little time if they'd had one more fight I think they would have gotten it because they had really good progress even though they were losing the fight you know with each with each of the two fights that they got and, and point three but Shadow Dreams just holding here the second point hole was probably you know what did it and even though they could have easily 
you know, uh, won the map there. The fact that citizens uh, took that point was very impressive, but still, they they just they were felt too far behind early on. Yeah, Shattered Dreams, I think, is really showing kind of what they've been showing when it comes to looking at all their matches. You know, they went down into the lower bracket pretty fast, and they were just able to continuously progress themselves and adapt to the situations they had to overcome. And we can see it in this match right here. You know, Citizens was uh, able to do pretty good on that first map, you know, and then it went over to Oasis. And then Shadow Dreams, okay, they take it. And now they go over to Eichenwald. Citizens are feeling super confident about it. They did so good against Scion with it, but they were just able to, you know, adapt. They played that far Mercy that was able to get those quick picks. Uh, eventually, when they did swap over to the May, they were using the May wall a little bit more defensively there. So that way, in case something ever did happen, unless they saw a very clear opening, they had something to, you know, try to save themselves, whether it was trying to wall off the enemy team from whoever else got walled off, if you're able to be around the corner fast enough. Maybe if you yourself are stuck there, maybe you just with uh, a couple teammates on the other side of it, just call like hug a wall, you build the wall back up and you just get back with your team, you know, so, something like that. It looks like they're doing a lot better and are really starting to understand how citizens want the fights to go and instead are flipping it completely. Yeah. And as opposed to when I saw citizens that were taking uh, the fights, um, they were convincing fights and it was very easily easy to identify what they were doing. You know, the Maywall was putting Noro uh, in a, a spot that was very easily, um, you know, taken advantage of and he would just get just get uh, rushed down as opposed to Shadow Dreams. It's like, I think there are individual plays that they're making. You know, we see 60 popping off every once in a while. We see Vanguard getting a bomb, bomb kill. Pretty much every single bomb he's throwing out is getting at least one kill, sometimes two. Um, and so it's a lot harder for me to, to identify what's what what exactly they're doing that's that's changing it i mean obviously the comps they're playing are changing but how they're making that work is just it's it's like their individual plays um are coming together in a way that's that's just throwing citizens for a loop and um it's it's i think that's that's the biggest thing it's just it's not one one player that's really doing anything or one strategy they're employing it's just every single fight is is playing out very differently and each player is doing something special that that's that's um allowing them to overcome citizens in these fights yeah, and now we do have a, a sub in. Jinja is coming in in place of Noro, so no longer will they be in uh, in the match. You know, you have to worry about the router going out a little bit. So maybe a little bit more stability here, but considering they weren't in for the rest of the map, this maybe could change up how they play. So it was looking like they were adapting really well against citizens, so maybe now swapping out the main tanks. Uh, as long as they're able to relay that information to uh, Jinja now coming in, you know, it could be a little bit more of a reset uh, with their fights potentially here because of this swap. Yeah, I, I know that uh, Nor I know Noro is not, for a main tank, he, he doesn't make a whole lot of calls that you would expect. Like, he's not the shot caller in a lot of these sense. I do know Vanguard lets him take that role, so I think swapping these main tanks is not going to make that much of a difference, especially when you think that Genja is, is their their normal main tank anyway so um this is this is uh assuming shadow dreams keeps doing the things that they are doing I, I don't i don't see this um changing um how they're going to be approaching the game or or how how well they're going to be performing i think it's gonna be more on citizens too regardless where genja comes in or nora comes in there it's gonna be on them to make the changes regardless of which of which map um which does seem like it's going to be temple temple of anubis so we'll play more to the strengths but i still think like the momentum is in Shadow Dreams uh, corner. Yeah, I I think it it is looking good for them. But like we were saying before, the two CP is kind of their I don't know. I wouldn't is, is their weakest uh, pool, and you know that's probably something that citizens have considered going into this. That's probably something they wanted to try to do, but maybe they wanted to save it for try to get a confirmed map win. So the fact that they're down now to one in favor of Shadow Dreams, of course. They, they want to pull that out right now while, you know, they're uh, they're on the ropes, technically. You know, one more map, one for Shadow Dreams. They take the series, they move to the finals, and Citizens gets third. So it's do or die right now for Citizens. They don't win this map, then, of course, they don't go to the finals. They do win this map, they still have to win one more after that. So it's, it's looking pretty scary. I'd be a little nervous here on the side of Citizens, but hopefully they're able to control those nerves. And we should see still some good May play coming out from them. Boat's been doing an amazing job, of course, so I don't expect that to change in any way, shape, or form. Especially yeah, on Temple of Anubis. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I definitely want to want to stay with that. Um, I just say stay meta. Like, there's no reason to change. Even I was thinking like maybe Zarya, but 
We haven't seen Inzaria from Liu Kix and her, her diva has been really strong. Um, it's fallen. I like I haven't seen her in the, in the kill feed as much because earlier on she was getting a lot of um, a lot of dive kills. So I like to see her try to do that more because early on I did see her at King's Row is what comes to mind um, where she would just dive in and get and get uh, get kills really well or at least at least disrupt the back line and, and I never saw her like dive in and be the first to, to get demacked or, or killed or anything like that. So um, maybe you can ha let her um, be a little more offensive. Um, unleash the beast. Unleash the beast. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe as we're going to get ready to move into Temple of Anubis. Now, Shadow Dream is going to be on the defense. I don't really think they're going to change anything up, and I don't think Citizen's going to change anything up on the offense here. I think where, if anything, is going to change, uh, it might be Shadow Dream's to when they're on the offense because i feel like you know it it can be a little bit more difficult of course to run dive uh, on first one anubis because a may can easily put up a wall and then the winston really being the only one to try to get in there as fast as possible and now has to put that bubble down they're not going to receive any heals from uh an ana if you're running an ana as one of your supports which usually you do in dive um but maybe we also see maybe some snipers come out from shadow dreams or maybe even from citizens uh shadow dreams did go up against uh a sniper duo that did really good against them. I can't remember. I don't think it was Crix. It was maybe it was a stray. Um, but the sniper duo did really well against them. So maybe they're yeah. thinking, okay, yes, maybe we try to do something. Oh, it was it's a stray. A stray. Yes. Oh. Thanks for the confirmation. I believe, I believe so. Yes. All right. I'm not going um, crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, you are, but that's not a symptom of it. Something else. Oh. Is. Okay. <laughs> that's good to know. Uh, yeah, I got you. I'll, I'll I'll just keep you I'll keep you in check. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I would uh, when it comes to like how this match is going, as soon as Shadow Dreams swapped to the Winston, that's when everything started going crazy um, and throwing citizens off their game. So I would want to see and just start off on the well, they're on defense. So I guess you don't want to play Winston on defense. Where you could, um, he's pretty good for contesting the widow up top. But outside that, especially against the Bay, he's just gonna be fodder. So. Yeah, going with the Reinhardt, very smart play. They're going with a Brig, though. So a Brig, it can be very strong if the enemy team starts to to swap to the dive. But um, outside that, it can be very, very tough um, to, to get the value out of her because you can't, you just lose that disengage ability. So um, Citizens exemplified exactly how strong that disengage can be with the Lucio. So you do lose that, of course, with Brig, but you, you gain some some very, very um, other you know positives. But... Just making those shine, it can be very tough. Yeah, and I think it can hold some uh, value when it comes to maybe going up against the dive. I, I assume they aren't expecting to go up against the dive. Citizens really haven't been showing off that uh, they're one to go dive uh, in this meta right now. But, you know, maybe that's something they are worried about. They're really trying to stand their ground, I assume, considering this May pick here. And the wall comes up so they're going to be just targeting these shields right now and the rotation looks like they're going to be going high ground right now for citizens uh probably trying to set up zeus for a uh, pretty good line of sight yeah once you get that once you if you can get stuck up there oh, oh never mind they gotta swap them out with a nice wall here huge uh, that was really good they did a little fake up so of course they try to rotate themselves back up there shadow dreams of course being they but it looks like it might not pay off for them actually as a few picks from both sides coming through but who's gonna be the ultimate victor here it looks like offense for citizens might be able to do it they're getting a few more picks here it's really just going to be clean up on this point dash uh and alexio being the only ones left here make that no one left there i take that back q-tip making their way back on the loose lucio uh fairly quickly but zeus of course going to be able to clean that up real real quick yep going up to mega giving them that two to three seconds or shadow dreams of two to three seconds to think okay we're sure where they're going and then nope sight coming down uh, that's the power of the Lucio, just speeding right on you, and then Q-Tip, not not a Lucio, can't get out in time. So with that in mind, um, Shadow Dreams is gonna be have gonna have a hard time stopping this because, as you can see, multiple of uh, Citizens' characters are at 70% and counting, so they should be getting their ults pretty soon. Yeah, pretty good anti nade though onto a few of the players should prevent them from getting too aggressive too quickly here. Both the Maywalls up, so they're not gonna have that. Uh, for at least a few more seconds here. I imagine they're back online in about a, now, but Zeus has this high noon Just really trying to you know get them away from each other and split them up in any way they can and right now Speaking of split up Alexio in the back Leo cakes trying to do something about that Taking out that Ana now so they don't have a lot of heals so the nano comes through on Korean snack and able to pick up three really quickly here This could be a very very fast hole or a very very fast capture on Anubis with about five minutes in the bank Yeah, team kill that's gonna do it Oof. 
Oh, that hurts. That hurts. If you're sh your Shadow Dreams fan, that that's the that's the clean fights we were talking about. This is just this is this is case in point. This is citizens' bread and butter. They just they take when they know they have to take one fight, they know how to take it, and they take it very well. Um, so they just they get that high noon first, of course, because they won that first fight. You, you know, um, Zeus was doing a lot more damage, and so they use that to gain all the all the point space they need. Force like five out of six of Shadow Dreams into the dark, and at that point, um, they got them right where they want them. And it's gonna be it was impossible basically for Shadow Dreams to come out without losing that fight. Although that you know they, they it's possible they kind of got a kill too, but Citizens just played too well and prevented anybody from the team from going down in just five minutes left on the clock. That's about as qu as quick as you could ever ask for. Ready. Yeah, it was really good. You know, that, that first fight took a little bit, but that's because they were doing a little bit of that fake. She'll go back in, which ultimately won them that first fight to take that first point. And then, of course, they have the ultimates to snowball into the second point. So now, with the sides being swapped, five minutes Attackers in the bank for citizens. I mean, right now, if you're Shattered Dreams, what are you what are you kind of doing in this scenario? It looks like right now they're they're sticking with the meta, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it sort of thing. But, you know, you got to be a little worried because if you go in there and if you lose the first fight, you're already going to be at a disadvantage for the rest of the game on Anubis here. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to take a look at Squid. Look at Squid's position. This yeah, could be very, I, was, very I was looking at that as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. That could be very good. But it, but if um, Shadow Dreams goes left, you know, they're left into the dark side, um, then then they could easily get blind side on Squid. And that point would be that spot would be pretty bad. But if they try to go underneath them and go and follow where uh, citizens did, then it's going to be great, but as, as I see here, they are going to nullify, so you're just going to jump off. Okay. Yeah, so Squid it's making the call. correct call to jump off there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're in the Mega. They put the Maywall up to try to buy them some space so they can get through, not to worry about a Maywall of, their, uh, of the enemies. They try to block them off, but it's still doing just that. Boat puts it up. They're trying to put all their focus into Ginger right now, but both these Rhines being the first ones taken out, actually, in the fight and getting to move forward now. They've lost out on the main. The Diva has been D-maxed, so... You're going to have to reset here and go back in for another fight. So already going to be at a disadvantage for relatively the rest of Anubis here. Yeah, but when you look at it like that, like you just you just need to get time at all. And then you can always just hold. So you got, you got to keep it like that. So, But the problem is Zeus is already at a high noon. He's just been dealing so much damage. And, and once you get that high noon, it's going to be so hard to take the space that you want as Shadow Dreams. Yeah, and they try to do a little bit of that fake that uh, happened before here that Citizens did. So now they're underneath. So Squid actually dropped off the high ground because they thought they were going right. So they're not going to have that option to try to get that in. But Zeus with a great headshot onto Alexio trying to back out during there. It was very, very good. It won them that fight. So that way they couldn't really push up, be too aggressive here. And draining a little bit more time off the clock is exactly what they want to see. Yeah, only two and a half minutes out of four already. So the Shadow Dreams, they haven't gotten to their first ult yet. So they need to start getting some damage in. Otherwise, this is going to be like very, very, very bad so for them. Yeah, and good anti-nade connecting on two of the players. 60 being one of them. And of course, going down now by Zeus being an absolute dead eye themselves, hitting all them shots. The wall's gone up, so they're able to get Jinja and Dash. They're looking pretty solid here. Half the time has been drained. They still have their High Noon. They still have Blizzard. They have used no ultimates from what I can tell so far. And, you know, they're pretty happy about it, I assume. Oh, man. Yeah, this is this is tough. This is just dom utter domination of the citizens. They, they have an answer for everything Shadow Dreams trying to do. The Maywalls have been on point. There you go. Okay, they, they finally got back in. This is the second time they made it this far. They definitely need, need to figure out something different they can do here. Yeah, but Boat was hiding over in the corner, so they weren't able to stop that Blizzard from coming through, and it's going to be able to pick up a few players that were frozen, and now the rest of the team, of course, is just going to fall. You take away the legs, there goes the table right onto the floor. This might as well just be a really, really hard rug. <laughs> yep, um, you're, you're going you're gonna to get hurt um, doing it, all that, it sounds like. Um, and with that, uh, Shadow Dream's coming back. They do have some ults, finally. The mail. <clears throat> They need this mail. This is their basically their one shot if they if they decide to use up their ults here. So the problem is citizens has five of their own. So you know, pick your poison. You got two fights here. Two fights. Yeah, and going in, it looks like they're starting off with a high noon. They have the nano on to Jinja going in, but that anti is gonna stop them from getting too aggressive here. Zeus now that was on the stairs and now has to back up. No picks coming through quite yet here. Mercio deciding to use that sound barrier just in case they were to get a little too aggressive. So Q-Tip has it at their disposal, so maybe they want to use that to be aggressive to try to get in there. I imagine a speed boost to try to look for this blizzard. They're rotating back up on the stairs. A wall's come through. Now's your time to use it if you really want to. Leo very low right now. Throwing up that diva bomb. Might be able to find some, actually. 
only looks like it's going to be able to find Jinja here on this Reinhardt. Meanwhile, everyone else is getting the kills here on the side of Shattered Dreams, able to get this point, but it's only about 30 seconds on the clock. They are going to get some additional time, of course, because they'll cap it, but, you know, it, they have to make sure that this next one's going to be done fast. Yeah, they, they definitely need to, to make it, you know, capture in the next one or two fights. Otherwise, it's going to be it's gonna be near impossible to, to turn the tides with how much time that uh, Citizens was able to gain. So if they can get a huge shatter here, that will, that will open it up. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard to get a clean fight um, with, with, with the lack of ults they have. Yeah, and right now, just tossing in the bomb to start it off. Actually finds a kill on a squid, so they're down that main heals. Korean deciding to use that shatter there to try to stop a lot of that push that could come through here. And a good stun on a Jinja, so that way they can't use their shatter. They don't find anybody with it. The kill's still coming through from both sides, of course, though. So no team quite decidedly taking the win, but 60 with the high noon able to find one on the Zeus, the Blizzard onto the point. They get the kill on Mercio, but I don't think they're going to be able to push up. Sony players are frozen and antied, and the Nano is well coming through here. He's going to make sure this defense holds on a little bit longer. Yeah, so Citizens utilizing all their ults, but definitely well worth it if you, they, you don't even give up a tick. So um, Shadow Dreams have to go back to the drawing board. They do swap to the, the May here, so um, they don't really have any ults to speak of. Now I'm at 50%, so this is going to be very, very tough. I, I, if I were them, I would just take a really, really slow fight and try to farm up to at least the beat or, or something. Get the high noon. You need an ult to come in here, otherwise this is going to be a waste. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for them. I... I assume because they know that they aren't going to be able to build up any alts, they're going to want to try a dry push and see if they can bait anything out. But, of course, right. they don't have any on the side of citizens either. So, ultimately, if you go in and you lose this fight, you're pretty much just feeding citizens at this point. So, they want to make sure they're going to be able to get the picks here. And right now, it's not looking like either team able to find that. In fact, Vanguard could be the one to take out the mech, be taken out of the mech first. Now going down as well because of that good nade thrown there by Squid, of course. So, they're going to be able to stay up maybe a little bit longer. But Kareem going very, very low, gets punched. And gets taken out of the fight, of course, because no ultimates were used, though, you know, ultimately what really happened was just both sides trying to uh, gain a little bit more percentage on their own. And about a minute 30 remaining here. It's looking pretty scary for the offense. Yeah, Shadow Dreams come up on four ults, but does, it's going to look like it's going to be very hard for them to get a mail before this time even expires, the way this is going. So um, they just have to go without it and deal with the, the mail coming up from Citizens. So this next fight is going to be crucial if they can just circumvent some of the ults that Citizens has gained then they could possibly do it, but it's going to be very hard. Yeah, and Squid found themselves in a really good position. Again, they're doing amazing with these Maywalls to put their on in the best position, so that way they get the anti onto people, and they're able to go in super fast and take the fight win as fast as possible. So now less than a minute on the clock. They still have pretty much all their ultimates besides Nano on the defense here. Dash might be able to build up an ultimate mid-fight for the last one here, but that's only if they're able to stay alive long enough through what will be Quite honestly, a very, very difficult way to stay alive when you're going to have five ultimates rushing you in the face. Yeah, you need you need to dash to farm his ult and then pull the trigger before boat does and or have Vanguard eat boats. Um, mail and then they just go right through the middle, which is a very smart pitch, that, uh, smart call, sorry. All right, and it looks like starting off right now, the Blizzard does make its way through. Alexio's going to be the first one taken out, so they're not going to have that nano that they would have had throughout this fight in a really fast cleanup. This is looking pretty good right now for the side of citizens. Only 10 seconds remaining. It's both of the tanks that are up. Make that just one frozen. And now D-Mech, Vanguard, the only one anywhere near the point. No one's going to be able to make it anywhere close in a matter of time. And using all the ultimates on the poor baby D.Va. You hate to see it. <laughs> oh, oh, she got blo blown into a million pieces there. That's, that's, that was not, not, not cool. Not cool. Uh, <laughs> she could just sit there, just sleep, wake up. It's a nightmare. To the bomb in your bed. Um, your bed is ice. This is a terrible thing. Um, so you know, in summation, citizens two CP. You don't you don't want to you don't want to bother. You know, you just, they just they're so strong on it. They just they know the win conditions on. You get, they need to take one point. They know the win condition. They know what your win condition you're playing for, and then they just take it from you. And it's so clean. It's it's crazy that we're as close. That to, to watch that map, you would assume that Citizens was just fought by far the better team and would have, and this would have been the final, you know, nail in the coffin. They'd take it 3-0 or whatever. But that's not where we are. We're at map 5. So Shadow Dreams is just, they found a way. They're just, it's like a well-coordinated, well-oiled machine versus just like some scrappy team you put together and, and somehow they, they make it work. It's really interesting. It's a crazy combination of, of teams we see here. Yeah, and now that they finished those maps, the score is two to two. Next map decides it all. 
Citizen's going to be able to ban a map, and I imagine Shadow Dreams is going to try to go with some type of King of the Hill map as the last yep. one to try to get that final hoorah. You know, it's their map pick, so they Lee have Zhang. the automatic advantage going in. They're going to ban Li Zhang here from uh, Citizens. So mm, I said that before I before it was in the mm. chat. I, I I knew that's what they wanted. That is big brain moments. Yeah, well, I mean, it's only what two uh, like two choices, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> If they, if they do pick but, up in the hill, I but, think it'll be uh, Busan. But that's true. Yeah, yeah, true. But at the same time, it, you know, maybe Citizens wasn't thinking about the the, the control like, you, you know, we are or, or whatever. So obviously they're on the same wavelength. So we, we do, we are in some respect, we do what we're talking about, you know? Yeah. yeah but yeah. While, while we do have the, the, the this little lull, remind you guys, we do have the MVP poll going on down on the bottom. In addition, you are gaining the Twitch drops as you're enjoying these two teams battle out for the lower bracket finals so that's pretty sweet um and just let us know who your mvp is and we will inter interview them after this talk to them let and they'll let us know what they're thinking and uh answer a few questions and you'll get to know them a little bit better and uh, if it's if it's from the losing team you can maybe you might hear some tears um some sniffles you never know what's gonna happen i hope not that would hurt my heart <laughs> want to make a lower bracket invest so much time and then go out in third it, it, especially if you're like i don't know i guess either team would have reason to be upset because as your shadow dreams you made this ultimate comeback and you had the the ringer noro with the laggy internet that still you managed to get two wins and if you're citizens you have the w w really well coordinated team and you take the, the map fights and you're the you're the one that's sh that's that should be there because you were in the winners bracket and you were there last time in the semifinals. That's like you know you're the, the top dog outside Zion that's supposed to challenge them. So yeah, either team would be team. yeah, would have reason to 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 feel like they should be the ones, the chosen ones. Yeah, it would be uh, a little bit of a return story for citizens because citizens always seem to do super well, but they're never quite able to grab that win. I can't. The last time I saw them able to net themselves the win was before uh, it was called the Overwatch All Stars Brawl. It was back when it was called uh, the Watchers, Watchers. Brawl. Yeah, yeah, that was like a completely different roster, though. That was like complete, I used yeah. to play that Citizens. That that Citizens was. I think they're all like most of them are probably T two now. <laughs> they were crazy yeah. good. Golly, that was not even close. That was like you knew they were gonna win, and then like every other team was battling for second. Yeah, <laughs> that's it's what just, it really was. It was the battle for second. Yeah, when my when my team got second, I was actually playing with Vanguard, and uh, when we beat uh, Baron Al, we were just like, "Oh yes, everything else is great. We take one map from Citizens, with it, and then that's just all good." So you just yeah. that's, uh, it was it was not pretty back. Then. They were just they were just they're next level. They were next level. But this 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 Citizens team is definitely very strong. But you obviously don't see the the domination. Um, there's really no team. It's really awesome now because there's not like that one team that dominates everybody. Sound obviously is gonna win, but like, or or, or you know, I've been winning, I've been winning, I've been winning. I don't, I don't know. Bold prediction, no. Uh, yeah, but it's not like they're dominating. It's like three two. You don't see three O's. Yeah, not nearly as much as it feels like it used to happen uh, from time to time. So. It's definitely been a lot better as of recently, and it looks like we will be heading over to Busan. Shadow Dreams is going with Busan. So, you know, I mean, they were able to pull it off on Oasis despite losing. I think it was the first round. They were able to pull it back. You know, do you, yeah. do you see Citizens having a pretty good shot to take it here? I think it I think depends. on Mecha Base is probably yes, their exactly. best map. And then I think uh, maybe City Center is probably going to go towards Shadow Dreams, and then Sanctuary with the big old bongo. Uh, that, that one okay. I think is going to be the decider. That's toss up. That. Yeah, it's so funny, right? That's exactly what I was thinking. Downtown um, is definitely going to be Shadow Dreams, Becca Bay Citizens, and then Sanctuary. Who knows? Yeah, it's kind of a mixture in that respect. Where May can be very good near the Bongo or on the sides, and then obviously the the long light sight, sight lines for Widow and or McCree are longer for McCree. So. It's roll of the dice here, boys. If we see Mecha Base, sorry, Citizens is getting it. It's just over. Yeah. If if we start off with like either either of those two maps that are, are what I think are the definite wins when you go into those matchups or the more likely, you know, like 80, 20, 90, 10 matchups yeah. where mm -hmm. it's pretty, pretty one sided. I feel like it'll end up being. But when you go to Sanctuary, if we start off with that and whoever takes that, I mean, they're right. they're feeling good uh, for yeah. the next two points, to, despite on which ones happen first. Mm hmm. So we we throw it up. Remember, it, it's like the old old um, 
back in the old days when Overwatch first came out and you had the coin toss. That's what it is. Oh it's my goodness. Coin toss. <laughs> I, co I totally forgot that was a thing. Yep. Back oh my, in my goodness. day, we tossed back coins in my for, day. for wins. <laughs> and you only had to end then if you were like attacking on like 2CP or anything with a capture point and the enemy team didn't get anything, you only had to get like 1%. So you just tr blink a tracer on the point, you automatically win because you get the Man. 1%. <laughs> it was so dumb. You had to keep somebody <laughs> on the point nonstop. If you stepped oh, off and they stepped on for one second, you would lose. You're giving me so, some crazy flashbacks I'm not enjoying right now. Yeah. No, I'm, no, 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 no. It, it's all for just say, like, the game is better now. <laughs> like, maybe some things you might arguably are worse, but, like, the game is, yeah. is so much more fun now. Mm -hmm. That was not fun. Yeah, the, the map, uh, the modes are definitely in a more balanced place than what they used to be uh yeah. when it's not as rng it feels like as uh it normally would be and we're actually seeing a sub now noro coming back in, back in. uh yeah. going uh out there you know i mean noro uh, it, it makes sense you know they were doing a really good job noro i think is most comfortable on the winston i could be wrong in saying that but i think yeah. they're a pretty good winston player uh so i'm imagining we're gonna see some more dive coming in here yeah, definitely. He's definitely very strong. He loves Winston. Um, he always sounds more excited when he's playing Winston as opposed to Ryan. But with that being said, um, you can't really fault Genja for that last map. But I, like, I don't, I don't blame him at all for that. Just because Citizens is so strong, we knew it before before we even got to that map or any map, no matter what two CP. So I, I, I don't think in any any way it's because Genja was was playing poorly. I just think they that maybe Noro would be good here. Uh, speaking of which, we do see the coin the coin toss went in the favor of Citizens, so for some Shadow Dreams, we will see Mecha Base being played. Yeah, so of course, this is gonna be really, you know, going up into the first fight. It's gonna start off as a battle of the maze. You know, who's gonna have the better wall to start off with and who's gonna be able to mm -hmm. engage on whoever is stuck on the other side of that wall. And then of course, yeah. you know, uh, whoever ends up winning this uh, first fight here, I think it's uh, normally whoever gets the point first, I saw this in Overwatch yep. League. I remember the number. It has a 60% chance of winning that round. It's something like that. In T3, it's 80%. In T3, <laughs> so, it's probably it probably is higher. Yeah, it's much. Higher. It's so hard, man. You have to be really coordinated. And eat. Once you lose that first point, you start to think, okay, should we change comp and get something that can flank or something so we can take different angles? Because otherwise, it's just so hard to power through those just choke points. It's like the Li Zhang one, um, only worse. Five. So. Yeah, this this first battle will will be pretty much the decider. So so pay attention for the first fight, and then you'll know who wins. Yeah, both teams deciding to go with the uh, Reaper May composition here, but it looks like uh, they're gonna get there a little bit faster right now uh, from the side of Shattered Dreams because the, I think they started off with the uh, Sim, or maybe yes. that was Citizens. Uh, and was, they have a yeah. Lucio. Oh, and they have a Oh, I didn't even realize that as well. Yeah, so they're going in. They're going to have a little bit more of the engage. So now Mercy on the brig instead, but a big anti nade going. Looks like connects on two of the players. Of course, Reaper able to just fade, so they get cleansed of that fast. It looks like they're just going to drop the point here and try to take the try to take the fight there. Try to cap it first too, and that they do. Really, uh, nothing coming in there. So they're just kind of standing on top, waving hello. Uh, yeah, the penalty for being on the point, supposed to high ground, is not that bad because we aren't playing with McCrees. Yeah, so I assume they were just waiting for cooldowns to come back up. They got a good May wall and they hit a pretty good anti grenade here. So now 60 and a little bit bad of a position, but of course that May wall goes down, so they're able to find themselves in a better one. Vanguard on the point. They've already missing out on two so far as Noah and Q tip go down. Vanguard following behind, so they're able to build up some percentage. Uh, maybe getting themselves about 30 here. A good sleep on a dash to prevent them from uh, stalling any longer. So they were able to cap it, but uh, got 30%, but you know, I, I assume they would have wished to see more. Yeah, and, th and this is where you start to see the mecha base play come into come into play here because it's gonna be very hard for Shadow Dreams uh, to power through. So let's see if they can, what they can do. They're trying to get fancy here, rotating around, especially with that Lucio. They can make it happen. So yeah, both these May walls coming out right now, so they're not gonna have them going into this fight. Zeus behind, trying to get some damage done there. The blizzards come out. This Ryan might get frozen, but not quite. They're able to find their way out. Both of them actually, as a matter of fact. But nobody going down to either of these blizzards, despite someone I believe was frozen there. I think it might have been Alexio. The shatter comes through right now. Looks like the one on the ground is going to be Boat, but doesn't get picked up. Zeus, in fact, is going to be the one able to pick up these kills here, too. Make that three now onto Nora as well. Make that four, getting a 4K during this fight. Zeus 
putting in a lot of damage with those dual wield shotguns. Yeah, Zeus just flanking on the right side, expecting uh, Shadow Dreams to do something fancy, try to mix it up, which they do, which is the right call. It's not definitely like the wrong call, but it's going to be very hard. E even even though uh, Citizen playing with the Brig, they're still having trouble getting past. Yeah, and they got to be careful. It looks like they're going to try to wall off the left side, but the maze on the right, and they're not ready for it. Now they get to move in here. They're so split off because of that. That was a good play by them. So many people are only one health boat. Able to go in there, do a little bit of damage, and get that knockout killing blow onto Noro. So they're going to win another fight here. This point progress ticking up to 70% and counting, making the Diva go back to spawn to change, I assume. But nah, Zeus getting greedy once, them kills, and going for that gold elimination and then some. Shadow Looking Dreams, good right now. Yeah, very, very powerful here. The Shadow Dreams has one more chance here. This is going to be the last fight for sure. And they don't even have, like, a male to take it back in the Shatter. They're going to have to. Hopefully have this Reaper ult big, get big value, but as it stands, it's not looking good. Yeah, as Zeus got Nano, they're just able to run in there. Now the Death Blossom comes through, Korean able to just swing that hammer through there to get those kills as well. They tried going underneath, so it was a good angle. I think that was really their best chance because Boat would have walled them off in either way, but they still got the wall off on the bottom, and they're going to get this first point here on Busan Mecha Base. Mecha Base strikes again. Yeah, you can't take it back against the May. It's just too hard. Um, Score. I, I could theory craft, but in the end, like it, it, those walls they were trying to do to get in were, were probably the right play. Especially, I don't know if they did this on purpose, but they left the Reaper behind to get walled off, so he could easily uh, shoot through. Um, and you know, anybody else that was uh, that was behind could go through. So it didn't take but a few seconds to get through. So that's not it. It's just going through that narrow choke, and even that two seconds that it takes the Reaper, it's just too much. So. Um, with with Sanctuary being this, this is kind of like the worst case scenario for Shadow Dreams, at least in, in our theory, you know. So Mecha Base plus Sanctuary, this is one that could go either way. Um, we'll just have to see if we see we see Shadow Dreams starting off with a dive comp. So this is very good. Um, I like to see the change. Um, it's gonna be very hard as, as long as Zeus stays near Squid. It's gonna be very hard to take out either of them. Yeah, and. I mean, you know, this is kind of what we expected to see. You know, this is why Nora's back in. They're really good on this Winston, and they want to run the dive on this map. Unfortunately for them, Sanctuary, like we said, coming up before uh, they get to go to downtown, which is, I assume, uh, what they would have more rather wished for, considering how fast they were to go over to this dive composition here on Sanctuary. So, you know, it, it's looking good for them as long as they're able to, you know, get this point, but that's only if they're able to get the point. Now going in the back to try to get that dive, they're able to get Zeus, but the, the pin comes through on the dash. Now both teams missing out on that DPS. What they really want to be looking for is the support right now from the dive. So if they're able to single out a support and try to get them, that'd be massive. Vanguard, though, getting d max, so not quite what they were looking for here. 60 going down, but Korean's next as well, so it looks like they might be able to stabilize here as Noro gets all those heals, but going down fairly quickly now. But more people are making their way back from the side of Shattered Dreams. They might be able to take this here. It's Zeus on the point really low, and Leo Cakes in the baby diva form trying to get out of there staggering and staggering and staggering until eventually they get taken out yeah um i think citizens lost track of noro he went off to the side and got uh, like a mini health pack got healed a little bit when he came back around into the little hut he got right on to uh mercio and squid and just tesla cut in both of them at the same time with his shield up so never something you want if you're on the other side so with that being said um it's a very tough situation for him yeah and going into this next fight here you gotta be curious does do they wait for the Genji to get his blade so that way they can do the Nano Blade? Do you just give it to Noro in case they get low? They do have Primal, so you don't have to worry about that too much, but that's just something you have to think about when going into these fights. Engaging into the backline fast and a good anti-nade onto the Reinhardt and I believe the Ana as well. Squid going down. Leo Cake's able to eat that full spawn, but now the blade coming through, able to pick up one so far in Korean Snacks. The Nano as well is able to hit them, able to take out Leo Cakes, so. They're able to take out the tanks with that nano blade there. They used, I think, three alts in that fight. Nope, make that four to six to use the pulse bomb. Meanwhile, they didn't use any on the side of citizens. So going to this next one, they definitely have the advantage. Could be, could be pretty, pretty interesting coming up here. But, you know, I think something they're really gonna have to, you know, be mindful of is gonna be whether or not the nano comes through onto Zeus going into the back line. Because like we said before, you know, the teleport with Zeus into the back line, able to do so much damage, could be absolutely devastating. But we can see right now, 60 in the back line, trying to look for one of those supports, so that way they can dive and go in. And that's what they're doing. Zeus trying to stay back with them. The beat coming through, the bombs up high in the air, able to find Mercio. Zeus though, of course, able to find a couple kills throughout that fight though. Able to pick off Noro and then Alexio, but 
the uh, the dive is so far trying to hold their own. They're able to get two picks of their own as well. Dash has to be careful. The Shatter comes through, able to get Vanguard on the ground, but Zeus goes down, so a lot of that damage that was supposed to take them out has now have to be moved over to the pin here uh, from Korean Snacks. Dash going down pretty soon after, though. They decide to use the Sound Barrier and use the Blizzard, so it's looking right now like the dive's doing good, but a big bomb from Leo Cakes could completely turn this point back into their favor when they thought all could have been lost there. Leo Cakes hits a massive bomb. She's able to pull it back potentially with that, and now they have to back off. The Winston makes their way out. They're able to flip this point, but it's at 99. So now they're going to be sitting, and it's last fight territory really for this map. Uh, any fight could be the last one. Uh, yeah, imagine if they had that beat though coming in with, with the Nano Blade plus beat plus Pulse Bomb, and it would have been much better for them. But as it stands, they're still in a really good spot, especially since uh, Citizens is really wanting for ults at this point. Yeah, and they have the Nano Blade, so it, it, it should be good, but it depends on whether or not they're going to be able to take up the Ana fast enough. They weren't able to do that. The Blade comes through despite the Death Blossom going in and getting Alexio. Da uh, dash able to dash through, gets three. Noro getting one as well, so it looks like they're going to be able to take this one pretty convincingly despite that Death Blossom going in. They tried to take Alexio out as quick as possible because they knew that Nano was going to come in with that Blade, but they weren't able to do it until that Q button was pressed, and now the fight that was the most 50-50 has gone into the favor of Shattered Dream. So now going into the last round, which will be downtown, guaranteed, it's looking pretty, pretty good for them. Yeah, they definitely pulled it out here. I, I, their dive is just is very, very strong. I, I would very surprised if they didn't do it. They did something other than that on this next point um, as well, because they just they find the backline very well. And I'm not sure exactly if the if the peel maybe is is not where it should be, or they're just they're just too good because sometimes you can get. Like the damage, you just can't peel it. Sometimes, you know, especially when you have like a, a dash from a um, from a Genji coupled with the Tesla cannon from a Winston. That's a lot of damage to try and negate. You can't, you can't matrix that. So, um, very well played for them. And, and this this point should be um, a very close one. Yeah, and you know, since they are running that dive sixty with that, uh, you know, widow, they're gonna have to back off immediately here from Citizen. Looks like, and they're gonna go back and switch now. In, the, uh, in their last match against Scion, I think they did their best going up against a dive when they ran a dive of their own. So this may be what they're going to do here. It looks like the switches are coming through. And yes, they are swapping over to a Widow, but it looks like that's really going to be the only switch. So to try to contest the Farmer Mercy and the Widow, it's going to be a tall task for Zeus. But if anyone can pull it off, I'd imagine it'd be him. Yeah, they did go with the Baptiste as well, which is very interesting. But uh, with the extra uh, hit scan hero against the Pharaoh, that's probably their thinking. Yeah, it should help relieve some of that stress a little bit that can be put onto them. Neuro having to use the jump to actually get out, and a good freeze on a Vanguard is going to leave them out of the fight. So they're already down one player. They have to be careful. They back up. They're able to get the pick on a Zeus, though, so this could be uh, a little bit better. This Widow doesn't have to worry. They can play open sight lines. The only thing that can really contest them is the Diva if they choose to dive in, and, of course, the rest of the team has the Widow's back with some peel if they do need it. So it looks like Citizens are going to like to go over to the point to try to take it over, but 60 getting another shot now onto Boat. They take out that Immortality Field. They're stuck in this little corner right here. They're able to get a few picks, though. Leo Cakes and Korean Snacks both getting some, but Dash ultimately being the one on this far right here to try to clean up this fight. Still, these tanks are alive on point. They have to be careful. The Shatter comes through, but the Barrage to try to stop any push from coming. It doesn't look like it was actually as effective as I thought it was about to be, and they are able to flip this point now uh, to the side of Citizens. Yeah, that, that was uh, just one of those fair holes where like, it's either three kills or, or zero. In this case, it was just DMAC, and then she got taken out. So I, I'm surprised that they stayed, they stayed on it. I would like to see them swap, maybe back to dive. Okay, here we go. Nice. Okay, so 60 might swap off. Okay, so we're going to see maybe swap to full dive. Definitely very, very good call. So we're going to see if Zeus can say... The problem is that Zeus can get that high ground so that he can be uncontested. So I'm very surprised he hadn't taken that. So if he does that, then it's going to be a lot harder for the dive to get onto him. Yeah, but now that they don't have the Widow and they have the Genji instead to try to contest her, it should be a little bit more easy, I imagine. So the Widow can't be uh, as free going as they wish they could be. The Immortality's come up, but is immediately taken down. Dash, able to get the first kill here. And now the rest of the team as well, finding themselves in the feed here on the, well, Alexio on the receiving end, but everyone else on the giving end here. Vanguard able to pick up a few there, and Dash getting that last one on the Zeus, able to flip the point back over with the team kill. Yeah, very, very clean, only losing Alexio, so they're definitely in a great spot. Um, building up here to some pretty good ults, and, and at the same time, they force Zeus onto the Sombra, so Zeus is going to reset and ult and squid onto the Brig. So they're going to have really low heals, but assuming that you know they don't get burst down, they, they'll have a lot of tools to, to counter this dive. Yeah, but Zeus already using the teleporter to get back. 
so they're gonna be a little farther away out of the fight the bomb going up into the air from vanguard right now it could pick off boat and that it does boat got stuck on that wall they're trying to blink out they didn't have the recall but now up in the air from leo cakes able to find one on the q-tip as well so both teams down a few players but it looks like the ones that are gonna be able on the to win the fight well maybe yeah they're gonna go in back here they're getting the respawns back leo cakes has to back out so they're able to stay on this point a little bit longer now taking up to 90 percent shattered dreams are looking pretty good right now yeah, this is going to be the last fight for uh, assuming that uh, Citizens doesn't take this. So this is the last chance. Just two ults to their name. Possibly the, the Winston ults. So they got to make this work. Yeah, they're able to engage with overtime now on the board because they sent the Sombra back there. But a good anti-nade onto the tank. So they're going to be low. And this blade coming out. Mercio no longer up. They are going to be able to use this blade to its full potential. Despite there being no nano, they're still able to, fit, uh, to pick up a few more kills. Boat doing a lot of work, though, on this Tracer. Able to find, I think, three in this fight. And a good Pulse Bomb coming out from 60 to take out Korean. So it's going to be the Tracer versus the Diva Tracer on the point right now. Getting DMX boats doing a really good job, but they're able to get the kills. And right now, just running to the point, Mercio can't make it quite in time. So that's going to be a 3-2 in favor to Shattered Dreams to take it. They're going to be moving on. Meanwhile, Citizens taking a bronze trophy home. Wow, that was so close. I did, this match did not play out the way I thought after the first map or two. So very, very nice um, comeback from Shadow Dreams and just just playing to their strengths and, and very happy to see them utilizing the dive more so. Um, after Mecha Base, it was, especially, it was looking pretty bad. Um, so this just looks so, when they look dominant, they just look super dominant. And when Shadow Dreams wins, they, they look like a slightly better team. <laughs> they look like a good dive team. Yes, definitely. That's something that's something that Scion's going to have to be careful for when they're facing off against them in the finals. But uh, let me hurry up and tell you guys, go down below and hurry up and vote for that MVP. The match is over. Hurry up and get those votes in if you haven't done it quite yet. That way we can tally them up, bring them in here. It doesn't matter on the side of Citizens, on the side of Shattered Dreams. We'll bring them in here and the interview will happen. Hopefully, probably, maybe. I don't see why it wouldn't. <laughs> um, chances are pretty good, so we'll see, we'll see who wins and... Uh... Get, get their insights but as, as for my input on on the match uh, it, it was just awesome like the 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 the, the mind games you, you could see the mind games that were happening and just how especially when you when you think about the bands and how they were trying to play around each other's strengths and weight weaknesses and um the rotations from citizens were so good and the disengagers were so good but the engages from shadow dreams especially when they were playing that dive were just so so freaking strong that um the backline of citizens was just getting demolished when they did go to go to um, to their dive comp. Yeah, and I think that the dive comp, I you know, citizens they run a a good dive. I they are able to initiate more with it. I think when they're running their standard composition of that that Rhine Diva May uh, and blah, the rest. Uh, you know, that's when it starts to fall apart because it's like, okay, we need to stay together as a group, but we're getting attacked from all these different angles. So it's like, even though they're playing as a group, they're all focusing something different, you know? And mm -hmm. I think when you go a counter dive, not necessarily to do a counter dive where you jump the enemy's back line when they jump yours, but rather to initiate and be that first aggressor, I think is where citizens really shined. And mm -hmm. that's kind of how Shattered Dreams kind of took it back. They adapted, they becoming, or they became... Be they started being more aggressive, uh, and I think that ultimately is what got them the win here tonight to bring them into the finals against Scion. Yeah, and that, what a match that's going to be for sure. I, I really hope um, that if Shadow Dreams does find themselves behind again, then they are going to do the same ad adaptations or, or you know whatever adaptations that are needed, um, so like we saw here today. Um, that's that's the, that's their strong point outside their dive is just to be able to adapt and and uh, make the changes that's necessary to, to come away with the win. Yeah, and now, I mean, as we just wait here for this MVP poll, let me remind you guys to follow us here on Twitch, join the Discord, subscribe on YouTube, follow the Twitter. You know, now's a good time to do it while we're just waiting for this MVP poll to come in here. So, I mean, you know, if you want to keep up with all the action, those are great ways to do it, you know? And if you want to see anything you missed, go over to that YouTube, watch a video to make sure that, you know, if you missed maybe today's match, one of your buddies missed to be like, oh, hey, go check out the YouTube. Maybe, you know, you're just a little worried. Like, oh, what if Twitch doesn't send me the notification for some reason? Well, if you're also checking us out on Discord and Twitter, you'll get notifications for that too. So, you know, all around, you should be pretty set up. And uh, we do have 60 here. The hit scan DPS you guys watched from Shattered Dreams. How are you doing? Good. How are you guys? <laughs> pretty well but probably not as well as you are right now congratulations 
Thank you, thank you. We're pretty pumped about this one. Yeah. Um, how? What was the uh, the reaction when you guys like? Did you guys go bonkers when you won that last point? Yeah, we were. The comms really stepped it up on the last map, and uh, that that last team fight uh, when we're cleaning up the lot, the final kills. Uh, yeah, it got pretty hectic, and the celebration was uh, nutty. I bet. Um, so. I saw that you guys had Noro, and then you got Genjin because Noro was lagging, and then he came. It was like, what was it like, and what was the when it when it came to those changes, and what brought Noro back in? Uh, yeah. So Noro was having a bit of technical issues, uh, so we we subbed them out, uh, of course, because the the ping issue was, just wasn't gonna go well for us. Um, then he he managed to solve it by the last map, so we we threw him back in. He was a little more warm than Genja was, so. Mm. Yeah, we brought him back in. Let's see, um, so we saw the, the on the McCree, especially um, early on. It seemed like you weren't having the the, the success that you were in in later maps. So do you know? Um, did you feel that, or or was there something else that, that was going on that we might that might uh, might have caused that? Um, honestly, I just feel like the first map. Uh, I just I guess the nerves kind of got in the way a little bit. I was uh, I was choking a lot of shots and uh, positioning errors too. Uh, we kind of got uh, yelled at by our coach, so it kind of woke me up a bit. So, <laughs> so I, I had to step it up for the for the next couple maps. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I didn't want I didn't want the loss to fall on uh, myself for errors that shouldn't happen. Gotcha. And uh, so, what what you guys started abruptly swapping to die, which you found great success. So what caused that swap? Uh. We wanted to uh, to kind of shake them up a little bit, uh, throw something at them that maybe they weren't expecting, and uh, we uh, we're pretty solid on our dive, so we're comfortable doing that, and uh, it worked out obviously. So yeah, now the results speak for themselves. Um, so, uh, Forsyth, did you have any questions for him? Yeah, uh, we saw you guys. You know, you got down in the lower bracket uh, relatively early on, unfortunately, and you're able to adapt uh, against all these different teams and make your way through here. What for you, uh, or for the team in general, I guess, how were you guys able to adapt during this match and what were some of those adaptations you had to make so that way you could secure this win against Citizens? Yeah, so we kind of, uh, we were seeing how they played, see if they like to play more passive or aggressive. And uh, we kind of just adapt our play style to that um, positioning, of course. And uh, we kind of, as the the series went on, we were just uh, just figuring out their play style and uh, coming up with counters to it. Yeah, and you guys ran a little bit of the standard, a little bit of the dive. Now, I'm not trying to get too much information out of you before you go into <laughs> uh, the match with Scion, but is there anything else you're kind of hiding in the works as a little back pocket, you know, solution to throw out on the field to give a little bit of a surprise? I mean, obviously, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil uh, the goods, but yeah. uh, we do, we do work on on things and try different uh, compositions and strategies that would throw off teams. Uh, we scout ahead uh, before our matchup to see how the opponents play, so we kind of go in uh, ready to counter that. Yeah, and uh, how do you, how do you guys think you're gonna do against San? You got any predictions for how the match is gonna end up going? Man. I don't want to be that guy, but I think I think we got a good chance at this. I think I think we got this one. You know, we come this guy. What? <laughs> <laughs> low key, low key. But um, yeah, we're like uh, we come this far, so obviously we're not just gonna settle for second place, I guess. Okay. Hum a humble answer to hear from someone who got the MVP. So congratulations on that. Congratulations on your win. Uh, you, and now you. we're just gonna give you some time. Go ahead and shout out whatever you need to shout out or want to. Yeah, so obviously shout out to the team. Everyone played their hearts out today. We played really well. Shout out to the coaching staff, uh, all the staff on the team. Shout out to SXD. Uh, go follow them on Twitter, SXD underscore esports. And uh, shout out to my girlfriend, who is my biggest supporter personally. And uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for coming in. Congratulations on the win, the MVP, and good luck going up against Scion in the finals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and with that being said, that brings an end to today's cast. A really close matchup between Citizens and Shattered Dreams where we saw Citizens start off very, very aggressive, really kind of showing off their stuff. It seemed like it could have been a little bit more of a one-sided match, but Shattered Dreams showing what they showed throughout the bottom uh, lower bracket 
their ability to adapt uh, and changing up their play style depending on how the teams act, of course, and ultimately netting them the win for today. So, you know, I mean, pretty impressive work today. Super excited to see the finals. Uh, make sure you follow us here uh, on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Discord. Check them all out, of course, down below, or you can do exclamation point mark however you prefer uh, and then whatever you're trying to look for there i've been poor zach your play-by-play -play. you can catch me on twitch.tv slash poor zach we can find my other socials as well and i'm sure you can find tony somewhere as well yeah twitter mr underscore tony 31 or my twitch which is tony styles all right well thank you everyone who came out here today we very much appreciate it and we hope to see you again for the finals coming up 